Hey, good morning, everybody. I got so caught up talking to chat, I almost missed the part where I go live. I looked down and my song was like three seconds going like, uh, uh, quick. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. It's another new day. It's actually time for another new game. So yesterday we chucked out, chalk, chalked, checked out a cozy sort of like post-apocalyptic city builder, kingdom builder, empire, I don't, I don't know, it called Before We Leave. And that game was cute as heck and kind of went um, in, a, in like a similar pattern to something like Oxygen Not Included, where it started like very cozy, very cute, very simple concept, and then just ramped up the complexity. And I was just like, heck yeah, okay. And a lot of people in chat were like, yeah, okay. But I don't think I want to keep playing it. And my reason for that is I can't imagine anybody who missed the first stream would hop in during the second stream and look at this like giant complex maze of like late game decisions and be able to follow along, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna call that game good and fun and maybe I'll finish it off in my spare time. But today we're gonna do another brand new game. So when we were on Monday, when we were looking through potential games to check out, um, one that a lot of people saw or pardon me, one of the ones that we showed that a lot of people reacted very favorably to was a game called As Far As The Eye. It's one of the most highly rated games by you, chat, and is a very cute... I don't even know how to describe this game. What, how does the store describe As Far As The Eye? City builder roguelike adventure game? How would you call this? Strategy single player building survival. Sure, okay, why not? I didn't get to meet the spoopy space beans in that game. I know there's a giant whale because that's like pretty telegraphed in the trailer. But uh, yeah, I never, never actually ran into them. You know, maybe that's fine. It got very civ-like in complexity. I almost wish actually that game um, before we leave had more adjacency matter stuff. I was thinking about this and other than houses and farms and pollution there wasn't actually like um adjacency bonuses for industry that i noticed other than like don't let too much pollution accumulate or your people will be sad you know if you think about civ and okay it, industrial districts get you know an exponential bonus if paired up with these districts every district or everything gets a bonus if you touch them together in certain ways yeah it felt like there was one level of complexity but not the next step after it, right? And that's fine. Hey, good morning. Made it to the start of a surge stream for the first time since 2020. You got up early or late. I don't know where you are. <laughs> hey, what's up, Winter Nightingale? Anyways, I'm going to click as far as the eye and I'm going to hit play. And similar to last time, I've never even launched the game before. So let's check this out. Some of you may have seen this game. Oh, it's not even full screen. Uh, I know Ben Ben did a stream of it on the Lure channel. Can I make this full screen? We'll have to wait till we get in. All right, cool. Everything else is high. That's fine. What if I... Hold on. Why did... Mm, okay. So if I, mm, okay, it's one of those games. It's one of those games where the whole screen is flashing black for you, right? When I switch back and forth between things. Let's see if I can do um, borderless. Is borderless full screen thing that works? And if I hit escape, hmm, okay. Um, so when you stream, you often have to be able to click out of the game window that you're looking at. So you can like click on notifications or scroll through chat or whatever. And some games make that very difficult for you. This might be one of those games. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. Anyways, uh, Parks04, thank you very much for that prime and five months. Let's just check the audio settings really quickly and give this game a shot. Turn the music down a little. Mm -hmm. 
Chapter 1, Oku the Vigilant. In this first chapter, guide Oku to the eye by repairing a bridge. Learn how to move your units and explore, harvest resources, complete your objectives, and prepare the caravan for departure. Lulu and Oku await your first adventure, accessible to all. All right, sure. Swarm! Give it 23 months, my friend. I can't see the name Lulu and not immediate. Wait. Oh, I almost thought it was Lulu and Oku. And all of a sudden, my Magic the Gathering Final Fantasy X fanfiction dreams of two people wearing way too many belts going on an adventure together was almost realized, but we're not quite there. At the cusp of the 456th blink, the sigh awakens. The growling of the waves free it from its long slumber. Its time has come, so it speeds. The waters approach and the cycle begins anew. The wave comes to cover the earth and ensure its prosperity for future generations. In the meantime, guided by the wind, the peoples of this land must take shelter. Pupils set off on their long journey to meet up at the eye. Their cyclical sanctuary, places of the great meeting. They will live together until their separation at the end of the cycle. Here, they will share their knowledge gained during the last 456 blinks. Later, the great tears will drain away, and it will be time to leave and start all over. Hey, good morning, Tara. Is it my first time checking this out? Yes! Yeah, Ben streamed this on the Lure account. I don't know if he did it on his home channel as well. I watched a little bit of Jorb's playing, but never from the beginning. So I, I don't actually know how to play this game. But brand new first playthrough. You are the wind. You awaken to the sound of lapping water. The cycle begins again. It is the time to accomplish your destiny. Okay. By the way, this game is very pretty. This is Oku. Oku is a pupil. Pupils are little curious beings that live in harmony with nature. They form tribes and settle in little villages. To move the camera around, Oku use the mouse wheel button. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at Oku. I like Oku. Okay. I I understand this game to be more like a roguelike game. So, from my understanding, what happens is the cycle refers to a period of um basically like flooding that happens. So you need to collect people, collect knowledge, and basically move your entire um, community towards the safe haven in the center of the world. And it's almost like FTL. It's almost like a push your luck style thing where every stage you stop at, you need to collect a certain amount of resources or an excess amount of resources, get out. And if you don't accumulate enough momentum, you won't have enough resources to make the eye before it floods. So this is kind of like a puzzle city strategy game like that, but also has a roguelike element to it. This one very much has a loss condition, which is very interesting. And uh, that's okay. This bar represents the time it will take for events and the waters to arrive in the stage. The wave is here. It comes closer to Oku each turn. Oku is here. In 30 turns, this land will be covered in water. You, the Sai, must save Oku. Open the map to find Oku's position in the world. Today, Oku is here. Oku lives very close to the eye and is never and never has to go particularly far. So, until the last blink, until the wave appears on the horizon, Oku inspects the area around the eye. Your mission is to repair every damaged path to help other pupils on their last stretch of the journey. Each cycle, Oku welcomes the new tribes. Oku was always there when no one has yet arrived, and always leaves when everyone else is already gone. And while waiting for their arrival, rubble must be cleared, rope bridges must be fixed, and trails must be blazed. Cool! Hello, Blender. Hello, Triple. Just remembered I agreed to start work at 7.30 a.m. tomorrow. That's, that's fairly early. The eye is here. The 
the end of the cycle, it is the destination. Okay. Select a path. Now, hold on. Okay. Okay, from here to here is going to cost us a, a 10 rations, 40 ore, and 80 wood. Between this stage and the eye, there is a collapsed bridge that stops progress. It needs to be rebuilt using wood and ore. Collect these resources and help to make the eye cool. Once Oku has been selected, you can whisper to move him. Right click on the hex. Do I not move with Wazda? Oh, this is a fixed perspective. Okay. Click on Oku. And right click. And as far as the eye, actions take place at the end of the turn. You get Oku to move. Click. Oh, cool. So you queue up actions and everything happens at once. Neat. What are we going to do the French only stream? Anybody who f who speaks French does not want to see me do a French only stream. I got my French is terrible, heartbreakingly. What's up Dragon Flare? Welcome friend. We'll spend movement points to move. These planes require one. Oh, okay. Cool. That makes sense. You don't go to move to these planes using it. Okay, yeah. And the turn to validate the action. The explorable zone is represented by gray. Ah, okay. You don't speak French, but now you want to see the stream? Uh. Uh. <laughs> Now, hold on. If the movement cost is higher, the people will need several turns to get there. Yeah, that makes sense. Some types of terrain are harder to cross than others. Mountains require 4 MP. Oh, okay. So we see that there's a little broken bridge there. Cool. Hey, what's up, Anklag? Thank you very much for six months. Enjoy your toasty new bean. All right, my CC isn't on. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, closed captioning has been enabled. Thank you very much. I like that you're joking about, like, the closed captioning probably struggling with my French, and then I just realized it's off. I think, actually, I can select French with my closed captioning. I'd have to turn it off, but it might be able to actually uh, do a better job than me. Nathan, thank you for 34 months. That's so long. One second, please. My throat is still very raspy from live last night, where I guess I just shouted constantly. Alright, here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to turn the volume up a little bit more and then speak a little bit softer. I need to buy a French magic booster box and then just read that for two hours. Holy moly. <laughs> Alright, this is a caravan. Help Oku get there to drop off. The 40 ore. Interesting. Okay. Wait, am I carrying the ore? Oh, I am. Look, I've got this cozy little basket behind me, chat. So apparently I already have the starting resources I needed. A different game today? That's right, 50. Welcome. My red was so... My face was so red often last night. You had me laughing. I'm glad. I'm glad the show was entertaining. It was... It was lewd even for, like, Jackbox streams. So... Ah... Uh, yeah, apparently welcome to this week of only hexagons. Who knew? Oku has brought 40 iron to the caravan. They're now in the stockpile. No, resources can't be used until they've been put in the stockpile. Okay. Now only wood is needed to build the bridge. They can be found in forests and jungles. Sure. Let's go this way. You need to assign Oku to a building for resource drop-off. Oku only has Lulu, the caravan, to drop off any harvested resources. Select Oku, then right-click on the caravan, and choose wood. Okay, select Oku, right-click on the caravan, and then select wood. Oku will change appearances 
in the assigned building. Do we look different? I think we look different now. We were blue before, right? Now we're... Now we're brown? Or am I not making... Or am I just guessing that's what happened? End the turn to validate the action. Until Oku has transformed. Okay. Maybe they didn't transform. Oh. Oh! Never mind. That's a transformation. I was being very silly. Okay, great. Among the pupils, the red panda form corresponds to the gatherer trade. Oku will be able to evolve in this form and gain experience in this trade. Oku took this shape in order to collect wood. This art style. Can we just talk about how beautiful this game is? Holy moly. Oh, Joel's already given me warm tea. As well as uh, some of our throat goo ink slayer. Joe takes very good care of me. She'll hear me clearing my throat off stream and I just walk in with like a, like a, mmm. And we work together to make sure that I don't get too raspy. When a trade is assigned, a pupil goes about their job independently. Oku will collect wood in the forest and drop it off without further instruction. Okay. Oh. Oku is not a very experienced gatherer and it will take three turns to collect wood. Look at this thing. Kind of gives me, what was it from uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, Appa? Kind of get some Appa vibes from this thing. Oku has now collected 40 wood. Oku knows what to do and will bring the resources back to the stockpile without necessary instruction. As long as you don't give a pupil any other tasks, they will go and collect more resources by default. Okay. <laughs> Lead the objective by bringing 80 wood to the stockpile. No, interrupting a pupil carrying resources will make them drop them and lose them. Before giving a new order, make sure they're not carrying anything valuable, exclamation. You love the cute balloons for everything? Yeah, no kidding. The rising water is announced by various vagaries. The closer the waves, the more frequent the catastrophes. The wave is always preceded by an enormous cataclysm, and it is best not to tarry. A minor vagary will take place next turn. Uh-oh, I like there's a little umbrella. Lightning. The clouds gather very quickly and suddenly. The storm is brief but violent, leaving chaos behind. Three bolts of lightning strike at random, inflicting 90 damage to structures and igniting forests and jungles. Oh no. A bolt of lightning has struck this forest, and the wood is burning. If you stay here, you might get badly burned. If a pupil takes too much damage, they will be called back to the sigh and will disappear. Okay. That's bad. But Oku still needs wood. Fortunately, the nearby jungle wasn't hit by the lightning. Assign Oku to harvest in the jungle by selecting Oku. And then right-clicking here. Okay. So this is explore. This pupil is already doing that. Great. Okay. Run away from the forest. Alright. The forest is gone. The plain cell wood resource is depleted. Oh, Interesting. So we've also got um, a maximum amount of wood you can harvest from any particular source. Returns of Collecti. We've got all the wood. Now they should head back. All right. Hooray! All of the necessary resources have been collected. Oku can immediately repair the bridge and move towards the eye. Open the map and tell Oku to leave by clicking the destination. Ah, Oku can take some of the stockpile to the eye by organizing it on Lulu's back. 
The resources taken along for the journey follow the tribe to the next stage. In this case, they will be useful to the pupils to build their paradise within the eye. Select a resource and put it on the bag. Okay. Love it. Oh my goodness, I love it. Well done. You helped Oku to the eye with a load of resources. Oku was safe. You must now guide other tribes here before the waves take them. Cool. Yeah, the one particular fire, uh, the one particular tree burnt down from getting hit by lightning, but it also looks like trees aren't infinite sources of wood either way. So it's get the, get the resources from it. Or the resource is, you know, the resource can be depleted or destroyed. And or destroyed. <laughs> Alright, and our next mission, Hanky and Shut must take one of the paths that lead to their next stage. Can you help them get the necessary resources? Learn to choose a path according to the available resources and halt biomes. Halt biomes, cool. Construct buildings, tame rhino flaffos. Wait. Rhinophilos? Rhinophilos. Instead of buffaloes? Rhinophilos? I love that. And trade them on the market. Manage harvest cycles and discover pupils in different forms. They're ready to get cracking. Cool. At the dawn of the fifth link, the great meeting is closed with the circle ceremony. Every pupil must go to the summit of the great cliffs of the west. It is a hard task, but few do not undertake it. Those who do not join the Psy to guide their companions in future... Wait, those who do not join the Psy... Wait, those who do not join the Psy. There we go. You had to I had to figure out where the pause was supposed to be. It's not those who do not join the Psy. It's those who do not join the Psy to guide their companions in future travel. <laughs> Mark Rhinophilo? Oh my god. <laughs> At the summit, a vast plateau awaits the pupils, who sit in concentric circles around sacred stones. Here, the tribes are reorganized. During the ceremony, each pupil is linked to two others, a new circle. A caravan is assigned, and the next day, they leave the eye for a new cycle. The translation can be a bit rough in some places. Oh, I didn't know this was a translated game. It's very... What's the word I'm looking for here? It feels like when I started reading the first chapter of, um, of Neuromancer, where the world creates its own jargon. And they're just like, bam, time for you to learn all of these terms because this is how people talk and this is just what everything in this world is called. And you're like, okay. All right, I, I now understand that I am in a new place. I am now living in a new world, and it's up to me to start a, to learn and pick up on the terminology. The Tolkien method of storytelling? Sure, right? I didn't remember. I mean, I read Tolkien when I was quite young. So I don't actually remember that. I think I would have attributed any struggles I had in Tolkien probably with also being young. I think I probably read it when I was like eight or nine. Maybe not that young. I have no idea. I'm just guessing right now. Similar to the original Dune. Yeah, Dune had a lot of terms too. Dune was interesting though because with Dune, you, you learn the world through the eyes of somebody who's also learning the world at the same time. So I, I, I would actually argue that Dune is a little bit different in that one because the character, you get to learn the world as the character learns the world. Whereas in other novels, if the characters are already immersed in it and that's just how they speak to other characters, you have to catch up. I felt that way about Dune. Nothing meant anything, but I believe the characters believed it was deep. <laughs> When they like looked at each other and very cryptically nodded. I mean, yeah, they had all the different house terms and like, sure. No, actually, I was going to say the Dune. Dune, maybe, because when they talk about like the houses fighting each other and the assassins coming after that, that was pretty jargon filled. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, 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 I corrected myself. I didn't realize Dune did have a bit of both. But anyways, I think we all understand the analogy. Anyways, two times already, the ceremony has linked Shut and Hunky, Hanky, in the same circle. Destiny has decided so. The cycle is reaching its end, and the wind in their balloons has come to announce the arrival of the waters. What a beautiful sentence. The wind in their balloons has come to announce the arrival of the waters. Stunning. It is time to leave and make their way to the eye. This time, Shut and Hanky will make the climb to the sacred plateau together. Even though their egos will never let them speak of it, their impatience for the ceremony is tempered by apprehension. This is why dumb protagonists or sidekicks are a thing, gives you a natural source of exposition. Maybe that's why Isekai is so popular. Because the character also gets to be like, I don't know what's going on in this world. Tell me how currency works. <laughs> You're like, ah, that's an odd question. Sure, let me tell you how all of the basic money in our world works. <laughs> uh. All right. This is a caravan. The tribe is composed of two pupils. Hello. All right, so our rhinophilo is kind of just chilling. Yeah, all the balloons are adorable. All right, open the map and take a look at our journey. I agree. Oh, neat. So we want to make it to the eye. And so we have to choose if we want to go to the deserts. Medium fertile land has... What is this one? Oh, wow. Wow. So if we want to go to rainforest, it costs us 540 food and 10 stone. Or if we want to go here, that makes sense. And the next step, holy moly. Uh, yeah, I imagine we want to go to the path that isn't a fortune. To go by the top path, you need to cross a bridge, but the bridge has collapsed and you will need to repair it. Okay. No, this path leads to the Fertile Land Halt. There may be lakes. Wait, there are many lakes, so movement can be difficult. However, there'll be a lot of arable land. And probably a lot of fish. Now select the bottom path. On the bottom path, the tribe will have to cross a glacier to reach the next halt. They'll need to collect pepkins to have enough food and some stone flint to start fires and warm up. There will be a lot of jungles and bogs, a lot of wood, but mosquito and disease are fatal. Mm. The tribe doesn't have the necessary resources to make this trip. Okay. I mean, I'm going to take the top one. To know which path you can take, close the map by clicking OK. Oh, I guess what happens is we now... While playing this, we'll determine what resources we get while we're here. And then maybe sometimes we plan to go a certain path, but depending on what we actually have access to, you get forced. Neat. Hey, Serge, thank you for the chill streams. It's about 2 a.m. where I am, and I woke up quite sick, and the stream has been a nice distraction. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That honks. I love Transistor, but I think Surge indicated he didn't like it as much while playing Hades. Transistor. I believe I played Bastion. I don't think I checked out Transistor, but that may have also been because the the art style didn't quite hook me. Alright, anyways. Go back to here. We only under know a part of the halt. Explore it so that you know your options. Okay, let's get you to go this way. Get you to go this way. Let's end our turn. That should give us information about most of what we have here. So we have a rock. We have some planes. Oh, yeah, we really don't have a lot of information here, do we? Let's have our sick buddies. 
All right, so we know what we're looking at here. So I want you to collect these stones. Oh, do I even care about stone? So it looks like I'm going to be forced to go the food path because we have stone and we have food here. Sure, let's start collecting stone. Wait, no building available to harvest this resource. Note that only a limited number of pupils can work in the same building. Oh, okay. Imagine I have to scout everything first and then it'll tell me what to do after. Let's get you, I don't know, let's just leave you where you are. I'm going to assume I want you to head back, so let's do that. All right. With food and stone, you can go via the glacier. If it's not already your current objective, select the glacier on the map. Okay. Pepkins are base resources and can be harvested via the caravan. Sign Shut and Hanky to collect. It's like each pupil right clicking. Okay. Weird. Okay. They have changed their appearances. Oh, there are two sources. I didn't realize there was another one down there. Let's take a look at the food gathering appearance. It's kind of cute. Where does it show their skill tree when it shows them trying to level up? Oh, it's probably locked right now. Oh, it isn't. Oh my god. Okay. I, I don't think the game wanted to show me this yet, but wow. Each little friend has its own skill tree. Look at all their little faces! Okay, they can specialize in gatherer, herbalist, builder, stone gatherer, harvester, trapper, or cook. Oh my god, wow. Wait, there's other jobs later on too? Okay, I think I'm going to fall in love with this game. We love a good tech tree around these parts, eh, chat? So I know I need at least 540 food. Peoples can't collect or stow stone in the core van. They need to construct a quarry. Okay. Takes 100 wood to construct a quarry. Buildings can only be constructed on planes. Be aware that any resources on a hex will be lost during construction. Place the quarry as close as possible so you can harvest it quickly. Once the position has been indicated, Shut will go build the designated structure. I think I'm in love with this game, chat. Shut has become a bird, the shape that builders take. Look at this construction animation. The building's going to take three turns. Well done! Shut has built a quarry. We must now assign Shut to collection. Sure. All right, so let's see what they transform. Wait, oh, okay, they stopped being a builder, so they're no longer a bird. What do you transform in today? Ah! Is that an oxalotl? Hey, what's up, Rakes? Played this game, it's the correct mix of adorable and strategic. Yeah. I had a bit of a hard time 
when I was just watching it, really understanding what was happening, because although it's very cute and very detailed from the smaller level, the further you zoom out, it gets a little bit busy. But yeah, playing through this tutorial, oh man, this is changing my perspective in a very positive way. All right, and now I just click and turn a whole bunch here, right? Maybe they'll throw a curveball at me. So likely get exhausted. Nope, never mind. Considering the inevitable doom is overhanging everything, it's oddly mellow. Yeah. So technically, in one more cycle, I'll have enough to to leave. But I guess at the you know at that point, you're like, no, let's keep pushing our advantage here. All right, stone has been depleted. What would you like to tell me about that? Assuming I want to just collect more berries, but we'll see. Wait, hold on. It's been depleted, but I only have 80. So... That's bad. Well, it's okay. There's a lot of time left in the tutorial. I'm sure it'll teach us what's going on here. Right, right game? You're not just going to leave me to die here, are you? Oh, did I interrupt them from returning with that last bit of stone? And thus, they got rid of it and I, I'm dead? Did I mess me up? Do I have to restart this? Let's just keep hitting end turn here and see what happens. There doesn't seem to be an easy restart button. Let's see what happens if the wave catches us, chat. Let's learn together. wonder if there's a secret Chivo for learning, losing in the tutorial. Was it Dungeons of Dreadmore that had that? Alright. Minus one turns until the water reach... <gasps> oh, wow. Yeah, okay. The water doesn't mess around. When the water shows up... Defeat. Alright. You take with you the last glimmers of the spirits that inhabited them. You tried to guide them, to carry them, to give them the right directions and the right actions. The result of your vain attempts is in front of you. See their clothes washed upon the plains, on the mountains, in the forests. You could lift them if you did not in turn become so weak. You, what? You feel that your reason for being takes you elsewhere. Another tribe awaits you. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. Now, that is... Probably, like... Wait, why can't I move? Oh, open the map. Yep. That was the biggest oof.
I wonder if I can turn that whispering noise off slightly. What do you think that is? Is that ambient? That might be sound effects, but I want some sound effects. I just don't want those whispering sound effects. Ah, it is what it is. But I want to hear, like, buildings get constructed, right? Hey, what's up, Tabby? That was <laughs> surprise creepy. It was uh, certainly a lot. All right. So I did not get a surprise Chivo. It should need to make some stone. All right. <clears throat> oh, that's me whispering to them? Right, of course. So that's our voice chat. So yeah, wait, it has a hundred oh. So it has 120 stone. We dropped 80. We were carrying 40 when we changed our outfit and just trashed it. And that's why we died. Fascinating. There we go. Okay. So let's get you to harvest some more berries. Hey, what's up, Stizit? Thank you, Zer. Thank you very, very much for seven months. Happy Thursday. Here's to a fresh start. My goodness. <laughs> what up, Alma? Alma's traditionally the first person to, who says hi. Like 95% of all of my streams, Alma's there first. So Alma running in. I'm late! Is very funny. I'm almost picturing like Alice in Wonderland style holding the clock right now. All right, 16 turns. Let's, let's see how much this push your, your luck style can take us here. Uga Chaka, thank you for four months, friend. Alma running in, holding scope creep in their mouth. Yeah, looking all flustered. <laughs> uh. We'll leave with five turns. All right, there we go. That's been deposited. That's been deposited. Let's get out of here. And now we want to take everything else with us. Wow, stone is big. Why not rotate it? Wood must be stacked that way. This bothers me. There. That looks better. What is this game about? This game is about surviving. This game is about a natural disaster showing up and trying to collect the resources necessary to get back to the center. So the world tells the story of a cycle, a cycle of basically like destruction and rebirth. So when the water recedes, everyone spreads out and they do their thing. And then when the water comes, people, us, have a very important job of uh, preparing the path for everyone else. So that's what we're doing right now. So we also laid down like bridges and other infrastructure behind us so that people can follow if they're behind us. The tribe has crossed the glacier and is now in a tropical halt. They must stop for a while so they can find the necessary resources to cross the next obstacle. However, the halt they left behind is now under the waves. They mustn't tarry on their way to the eye. The eye is the next halt. Alright, in order to get there we have to construct a bridge. So we're going to need to collect wood. 
some ore, and some stone. This halt is a little different from the previous one. It's a tropical biome where one will find more jungles and bogs than any other halt, okay? In a regular playthrough, the pupils start their journey in a large, balanced halt, as it's where the tribe has decided to live for the cycle. As such, you can find practically everything there. Great. Here's the caravan, which has just arrived. For now, the pupils are inside. They'll get out when the beast is settled for installation. The caravan moves exactly like pupils, but only has 2 MP. Move the caravan to a strategic location. Well, move right to the center. Let's just go ahead and leave it right here. What are these? Harvest the necessary resources. Hello? Pack animal. Explore the map. All right, the entire map has been explored and not a trace of ore. You can't repair the railway line without ore. Whisper to Shut that they should build a market. Ah, market is a building that allows resource trading with other tribes. Pupils attach crates of resources to balloons, which carried by the wind quickly find their destination. Soon enough, the requested resources find their way back attached to a small balloon. I love that. The market is an appendix. It's a structure built on the back of a pack animal. As such, each appendix requires that you have a rhinophilo in stock. They are the base resource, which can be gathered directly from the caravan. Find and collect a rhinophilo in order to build the market. What if I grabbed two... 65 turns in this one. Great. All right. Oh, little hearts. Oh my goodness. I love this. <laughs> yes. Wow. All the necessary resources to build a market have been obtained. Choose a pupil, select the market in the appendices tab for the construction, sure. Can only be constructed in a hex adjacent to a caravan and only on a plains. This is why placing the caravan is important. It needs to be near the base resources like wood or berry, but also adjacent to plains or forest. Okay. Let's get you to start collecting some wood here. Did I just cancel that building? Ha! Huh. Like all appendices, the market doesn't need a pupil to operate it. Okay. Not all resources have the same value, and the exchange rates change depending on the resources you have to offer. Obtain iron ore. So I can exchange 20 wood for one iron. Well, I don't have any wood. All right. So it looks like I should start gathering wood. I also need stone, 
So let's get a bunch of people working on wood here because I need a tremendous amount. So let's do some math. I need 400 wood. I need 500 in total. I need 550 wood from this map. So now you, how can I tell if they're carrying anything? All right, you're not carrying anything. Let's get you actually harvesting some stone right now. Because I'm also going to need that. And does that have a better exchange rate or a worse exchange rate? Five to one. There we go. Genius. Uh, wait, actually, I need, oh, 400 stone? Easy peasy. Hanky, please gather stone. What are your thoughts so far, chat? You dig in this game? The one thing that's probably going to get me is interrupting orders to lose everything they're carrying. A new vagary will happen soon. Downpour. Okay. You're absolutely here for it? Nice. Alright, what happens here? So we have heavy rain up until turn 41. So I have four turns of rain. I don't know what this means. The jungle has been decimated. Okay. Pupils are a respectful people who only take what they need. A pupil has no sense of ownership. So little that they don't even have their own assigned beds. They are careful not to waste. Nature does not forgive easily and will punish a tribe who wastes resources by leaving it behind. Okay. Okay. Do not exploit the resources that the tribe could not take with them. By leaving, wasted we bleh, by leaving wasted resources behind, terrible vagaries could strike the tribe down in the next halt. As such, when the wave comes too close, nature will push them along with major clima climatic vagaries. Okay. Neat. Also kind of spoopy. So if I just keep you chopping, I imagine we're fine. So let's purchase the 20 wood right there. The, pardon me. Stone for ore. Let's go ahead and buy the 10 we need. Complete the halt objective by harvesting necessary resources and getting out of here. Okay. So that's kind of cool. There's push your luck, but don't overly push your luck, right? More and more games that aren't just for me lately. I think it has to do with a surge of hybrid genres. How do you... You know, you gotta make your game stand out. Is there stone on this map? Yep. Harvesting it at the top right now, which is why I sold it. So it was 20 wood for one iron, or it was 5 stone for one iron. I need 120 stone, and this resource had 400. So I thought it was actually more efficient to harvest and ship stone than it was to try and chop. I did the math, right? 450 wood plus the 100 I needed to actually construct the quarry. So I, we, uh, we went for stone instead of wood. Get you to collect a little bit of berry now. What well, what kind of starting resources you want when you get to the next area? 
This is like an interesting opportunity to practice a little bit here. So let's imagine, let's imagine we won now. I'd be moving ahead with a hundred wood and like 10 stone. Yeah, we'd want to go a little bit more than that. We don't cost, doesn't cost us anything for food. So we probably don't need to stockpile that much of it. It'll probably take some practice to learn what we put in the caravan as well. And I imagine this is also similar to FTL. Where if you... There's actually no advantage to jumping too early. But I like that the wasted resources penalizes you for staying too long. So there's that sweet spot, right? This is assuming that a lot of people have played FTL. I don't actually know what this rain is doing. Pupils are able to sense upcoming vagaries. However, unexperienced pupils are not very good at predicting their arrival. Oh, can only sense them five turns before they occur. Next turns, your work, pardon me, next turn, your workers will be struck with a bad fever. Unassign them from their tasks and give them some rest by having them move. I mean, I have enough to just leave, but let's see. Let's see what happens here. So I'm supposed to unassign them from their task and give them some rest by having them move. Okay. The work may be too intense, or is it a warning from the spirits? Each people who works in harvesting production or construction becomes sick. Can I send them back to work now? What does, what does become sick mean? Oh, anybody who was working becomes sick, but... Because we're a genius, we avoided that. All right, let's do two more full harvests and let's get out of here. Alright, so we have 210 extra, we have 130 plus that. Let's see if we can carry all of this. Wait, hold on. I don't have any extra stone on me. That's fine. Something to learn here. Wait, where did my iron go? Sorry, I'm confused. And as far as yeah, your score depends on the rescued pupils along with the resources and buildings you have with them. Appendices are buildings carried by ruffles. Okay. They will follow the caravan and accompany your tribe every step of the journey. As they have their own rhinophilos, they don't take up space in the stockpile. As such, each appendix built systematically follows the tribe until the eye. Take as much as possible to the eye so peoples have all that they need. Used all your iron to move. It, it seemed to show that I had a, a deficit when I got there. Sure, I understand that. It's just like when you go to click here at the end, it makes it look like my goal is wrong. Oh, I need 20, I need 10 when I get there, and I need 10, so that's odd. Okay, this is what it costs to move, and our goal when we arrive here is to have other stuff. So that is quite counterintuitive, if I'm honest, right? It makes it sound like, I don't know, does it make sense as to why this is weird to me? I thought this goal here was the goal to repair the damaged rainforest. 
Wait, it is. It says 50, 10, 120. Whatever. I guess I'll buy another... Another 10. It's subtracting that on the screen, but it... Do you... I mean, I, I get... If you're correct, sure. But does that not make... Does it make sense to you why that's weird to me? Whoa! Suno with 10 gift subs. Holy moly, friend. That is tremendously generous. Uh, let's say welcome to... Mbop. Dr. Fromage. Lost Luck. Dev. Gouda. G. G. Odo Paste. Gualdhar, the Daily Maple Syrup, Rebellious Uno, you hit Uno, uh, Holland and Karma Joy. Thank you so much, friend. You're turning 40 tomorrow, and since I'm not streaming then, you thought you'd do it today. That is very, very, very thoughtful. Happy, happy future birthday to you, friend. 40 is a tremendous milestone. All right, let's grab one more cycle of resources here. I got that stone. I got this wood. All right, let's just try moving now. So the problem is, so check this out. If I do this, it makes it look like, you see what I mean? It makes it look like I don't actually have enough when I get there. Oh, the pack beast can carry some stuff too. That's adorable. That is a visual bug. Cool. Victory! Shoot and Hanky have arrived at the Eye. They are impatient to share their newly gained knowledge with the other tribes. In a few blinks, the waves will have covered the entire surface of the world and all the pupils will have gathered at the Eye. A new cycle comes to a close. By the fire, lost in thought, the two pupils have already left for the next cycle. Climbing the great western cliff will only be a formality. But what will their third cycle ceremony have in store for them? <clears throat> the shapeshifters. Help Crack and Scion, two ambitious pupils, to become experts. Learn how to gain experience and choose bonuses in the trade wheel. And how to feed your pupils. Build, manage, improve, and repair mobile buildings and discover proximity bonuses. Visit ancient remains. Crack and Scion await... Only you to meet their destiny. Sure. Pupils are metamorphs by nature. I'll, I'll take a short stretch after this one, sweetie. Joe's checking in on me. Reminding me to get up and move my body if possible. Alright, pupils are metamorphs by nature. As long as they can remember, animal instincts have followed them in all of their tasks. Like the center of an eye naturally dilating in the darkness, a pupil's form shifts as if its body instinctively knows the best form to take for the task at hand. My goodness. Every pupil has, from their first cycle, taken on the appearance of a red panda. All tribes need to harvest resources. Quickly enough, it's a reassuring and familiar form that shapes their day-to-day -day routine. Some silhouettes are much less habitual and are only worn by the elder pupils or the younger prodigies. Other forms so rare that no one can say if they really exist. The elders say that these animals evolve, that they are seen, wait, that they have seen them become rarer and rarer before disappearing just as they see the birth of new animals. Young pupils often speak by the fireside of shapes with long horns as complex as an oak in winter. They also mention web-footed Batrachians, able to breathe underwater. With shadow puppetry, they amuse themselves by showing off the shapes that fill their dreams. This game is so flavorful. Alright, Crack has always been a teller of campfire legends.
At each meet, the elders see Crack dancing around them, catching every last crumb of each story. Crack wants to become an engineer. Whenever the opportunity presents itself, Crack builds and builds. The status of expert is only achievable with experience. For now, despite having built a great many structures, Crack is still only a little bird. The little bird dreams of one day when it can become a toucan with a majestic beak. Ah, I love this! Sion, the other pupil, has the same aspirations in another domain to become an expert in fruit harvesting and learn the famous candied fruit recipe from the elders. This recipe lets the maker sublimate fruits into something much more nourishing. This is a circle filled with hope and ambition. Okay, cool. So we are currently here. The tribe is here. They have already covered a lot of distance from the eye, and in two halts they will have arrived. All right, I need wood. I need cotton. Is that what that is? Yeah, I need wool, and I need 40 food. Cool. You also want a magnificent beak? That's, you know, teach their own. The caravan is here. The tribe already has a building, a pasture. This building allows for shearing and stockpiling of wool. This wool can be used for making hangings, warm clothes, or to insulate buildings. Start to complete the objectives by, uh, by assigning Scion to harvesting berries. Explore the halts with crack to find some wood. Wool, okay, okay. So Scion wants to harvest berries. Check. And crack needs to go explore. Even though Cyan is harvesting pepkins, the tribe stock is running out. Pupils consume food each turn. When there's nothing left to eat, they lose. Okay, so we didn't even have to worry about that before. These are very resilient fruits that can be found in every region. Pupils eat six food each day, raw. They're juicy, but they are not very nourishing. All right, so we want to be able to cook better food. Check out their talents. Oh my goodness. All right. Every harvest cycle, build, or production that a pupil transform will bring them experience points in the trade that they practice. After gaining a certain amount of experience, they can get bonuses. Sure. The central wheel. I guess that means this. Represents base trades, which later specialize into expert trades. Sion already has a lot of experience as a gatherer and already benefits from a few bonuses. Sion requires less food than crack, for instance. Oh. Plus five harvested per cycle. Cool. Um, I don't know what that is. Maybe that's experience. And then finally we have minus one food consumed. Cool. Soon, Sion will be able to specialize as a fruit gatherer. Oh, okay. I can also click through multiple people here. All right. Crack has gained experience as a builder. Even at the center of the eye, some of the buildings are Crack originals. Progress as a builder. Progress as a builder is gained by constructing new buildings. Okay. Oh, you get bonus. Cool. That's actually really powerful. Get plus two MP when going to construct a building. So that lets you move and probably start building faster. Okay, we also have repairs twice as fast. Sure. So it feels as though... They're at very different points experience-wise. Oh, heck. Oh, 
I wonder when we get to see how much how much experience they have. That's their health. I don't know. We'll learn. It'll teach us. A whole rock in our way. Aha, we did it. Some peeps. These creatures are friendly and willing and willingly let pupils unburden them of their wool. They hate rain and hide during a downpour. Okay. The pasture is a mobile building. It's far from the peeps and harvesting their wool will take forever. Fortunately, it's a mobile building and can be moved. Click to repack it. It's Crack's job to reinstall the building. Open Crack's construction menu. Reinstalling a building is quite complex and gives as much experience to the builder as if they had built it new. Huh. There's the repack. This halt is rather peaceful. There are a lot of resources and many peeps to provide wool. Crack wants to take advantage of this calm to build a new building that will be useful later on. Since the last halt, Sion has mentioned the need for this installation. Even though Sion has been harvesting without fail since the beginning of the halt, an evolution has not yet come. There's not much left to learn as a gatherer. Okay. Despite feeling that there may be a way to improve and specialize, Sion lacks a place to truly find personal enrichment. The caravan only lets pupils gain experience in base trade. Do we have to make like a school building? To specialize, a pupil must build a building linked to the desired trade. To specialize, Scion must work in a harvest hut rather than the caravan. Build a mobile harvest hut. Okay, so first off, let's place this. I'm not supposed to build it on top, right? So we want to wait for Crack to build that other building. Alright, so we finished that. And I want to make a... Harvesting hut? I don't have wood. Is there a reason behind the cute balloons? Aesthetics. Oh, neat. There's actually food under this forest. That's cool. Alright, so we have enough wood now. Let's make the harvesting hut. Let's put it here. So I'm signed to the harvest hut and complete the objective. Okay. Zion has finally gained experience. Open the trade wheel. Aha. Okay. Gain experience is represented by a blue gauge around the next bonus. Ah, you see it internally there. When the gauge is filled, the pupil gains a level. Cyan has gained a first level as a fruit gatherer. Choose one of the two bonuses. This choice is definitive. 
The bonus will only apply while Sion is in the form of the Fruit Gatherer. It's the first step towards expertise and the famous recipe of candied fruit. Okay, okay. Uh, we can either get more experience, so they level up faster. Oh, minus three consumption per turn. So we have the levels up fast versus the slow and steady. Oh, I think, you know what I imagine what happens is we get to pick one each time. The book is not XP. What is what is that then? That is a different resource. Oh, cool. I'm gonna take more food. They haven't taught me about that resource yet. I don't see it anywhere, and I'm not carrying it anywhere. So I'm going to assume I don't need to worry about it at this point. Wait till we have a hundred excess wood. Surprised? Oh, there we go. So I'm leveling this up. I'm also leveling up Gatherer right now, aren't I? Mmm, okay. I understand. Right, so I just got 200 experience there. Should be experience in Gatherer stuff. Oh, it's over here. Okay. So now I'm leveling this up. Ah, I see. Neat. Thank you very much, my love. How you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Joe brought me another coffee. Feeling very tuckered today. This is a rare two morning coffee. Oh, I suddenly realized in the past day or two, we have crossed 700,000 views on the channel, which is uh, really quite something. What's the past 18,000 followers? My goodness. What kind of coffee is it? Well, heck, let me grab the bag. I'll be right back. Hey, good morning, Arclight. Probably meant two cafe morning. No, no, no. Having a second coffee in the morning, which is rare. But if I'm feeling tucker, that we do. Today's coffee is from a roastery called Bluesy. Look at this beautiful bag, by the way. Hold on a second here. Fume focus. Isn't that nice? Floozy coffee. What do we know about them? Interesting. From New South Wales, Australia. This is a coffee from Ecuador, which is a coffee region that I haven't actually had a lot of experience drinking from. This is the Finca Cruz Loma. This is an anaerobic washed coffee. Tasting notes of passion fruit, meringue, and condensed milk. Finca Cruz Loma is a family farm surrounded by vast jungle with a diverse ecosystem. In fact, there's only been access to the farm for the past 50 years. Grace works mainly with her brother, Gallo. 
The farm is pretty new to coffee and Grace is interested in processing techniques and their effects on the flavor profile. Due to the humidity in the northwest of the Pinchincha, where the farm is located, honey and natural processes are a huge challenge. So the three different lots we have purchased represent a series of experiments undertaken by the family. In this bag, you'll be able to truly enjoy the fully washed coffee. The anaerobic washed fermentation in water... Oh wait, hold on. Anaerobic fermentation in water, the amount of water used is 5% of the coffee weight for 30 to 36 hours, then dried on raised beds for 18 to 23 days. Cool. Very interesting coffee. Now you want coffee? Yeah, I do that to people. <laughs> You're excited for a free coffee tomorrow? Suno, you do what you gotta do, my friend. I'm never gonna yuck anybody's yum. Anyways, where were we? Right. Clicking end turn. So, we are consuming 11 food per day. We're gathering like 45 every other day or something like that. I wonder if it makes sense in the early game to try and get like... What if there's like some very key strategic things you want to try and level up in? Like, I want everybody to have two points in Gatherer, because therefore it reduces our food consumption or, or whatever, right? Oh, wow, that's hilarious. Trade for some food? We don't have a market on this one. <clears throat> that was the previous one. Just making sure it's trending in the correct direction here, right? If I have a full-time harvester, how long... How much do they generate for us? Alright, so... We have the necessary amount of wool. Let's take a look at the map ahead of us. So we know we're going to need 200 wool and 200 wood on the next map. So let's start planning ahead a little bit here, right? Okay, we can get 40 more wool out of this. Alright, the resource has been depleted. So, now what I don't know is... Previously it said any buildings that were next to the caravan works. So I wonder if I have to repack this and reattach it to the caravan in order for it to actually accompany us to the next area. You know what I'm saying? So let's, uh, let's repack it for now. And let's reconstruct it. I don't actually know if this is necessary or not, but... Oh, you just Tetris it? Oh, okay. Alright, let's uh let's get a little bit more wood, because we know we're gonna need a lot of that. We don't want too much stuff because we don't have to uh get punished by the gods or whatever. <clears throat> Pardon me. Getting closer. I think we can go a little bit further. But we'll find out. I've never actually over grabbed stuff before.
So I think we just want them to drop off their berries and we'll call it a day. Alright, that feels pretty good. Objective, construct a mobile harvest hut. I did. I did construct that. So I nailed my objective, didn't I? The objective is to construct a mobile harvest hut, and you constructed a permanent harvest hut? Oh! Well, that's bad, isn't it? Um, there's only one harvest hut. Unless I've done something wrong, I don't understand. Oh, there's two different kinds. Oh, oh, that also explains why I was given 40 extra wool. So under the build menu, I thought there were alternate recipes. But it turns out... That's not the case. Okay, so can I deconstruct this now? I can destroy it, but I don't know. I can't reclaim it. Okay, I've completed my objective. I now have a mobile harvest hut. All right, let's head to the next map and see what happens. So I don't know if I need to repack it or not. Oh, cool. Look at this. Oh, oh the Tetris game gets more difficult. Fascinating. Well, that's exciting. I worry the Tetris game will get annoying. I don't know. I'm having fun so far. This is an ancient forest biome. It is probably filled with ancient and historic buildings. This is the last halt before the eye. The tribe is finally at the end of its long journey. They must cross a wide ravine using a zip line to reach the eye. Wait, how do our rhinophilos do that? It's not possible for just anyone. Only an engineer can prepare a safe passage for the caravan. It's time for crack skills to shine. To become an engineer before the water reaches the tribe. Cool. Oh, I guess I guess if you put balloons on the rhinophilos, they can they can cross on the uh, zip line. No, you're right. You're right. Nope. That's what the balloons are for. So it requires an engineer, two hundred wood, two hundred wool, and ten iron ore. Neat. Fulfill the objective and get everyone safely to the eye before the waters come. Choose well where you place the caravan and deploy the mobile building to collect wool and feed your tribe with pepkins. Note, if you construct your building on adjacent hexes, they will gain a proximity bonus and their yields will be increased. This bonus is represented by stakes and flags around the building. Okay, cool. Um, give me one quick second, friends. I'm going to take a very short bathroom break before we get started here. BRB.
Hi. I'm back. Alrighty. Oh, look at the size of this map. Hmm. So I imagine I probably want my caravan somewhere in the center. But, much like Civ, the longer I spend moving my caravan, the less time I'm actually spending harvesting resources. That's also bad. Oh, we can actually collect iron for the first time. So let's maybe just move... Yeet the Rich says, My coffee with Surge Keep Cup arrived today. I celebrated by refilling it over and over. Now I can hear colors send help. That's very sweet of you. Thank you, friend. Remember to enjoy your coffee with Surge mug in moderation. So I just worry that if I... Wait, I have the mobile constructo building. Hmm. All right, now what do I have here? I have 88 turns. You know what? I think I can I think I can make this work. Wait, what's this? These are remains from ancient times. They're left over from previous cycles. Traces of passage from earlier peoples were claimed. Exploring remains can be dangerous or beneficial. You never know what you can find. Crack is fascinated by old buildings and wants to visit them all. Crack is delighted at the idea of sharing the tribe's discovery with everyone else. You know what? Let's just go back to here and uh, drop it down right here. All right. Let's get you... Hold on. Wait, where are my mobile buildings? I can unpack some things, right? Incredible, I can. All right, let's get a harvest hut going down here. And let's get you harvesting just a bit of wood in the meantime. What, wait, what do you mean Scion has nothing to do? I get this backwards. Scion is my harvester. They should be harvesting food. Crack. Nope, I got distracted there. Crack is supposed to be making the harvest hut down here. So I also need to make sure that we're getting those experience levels so you can become an engineer, right? To visit remains, assign the exploring pupil with a right click and then choose explore. Okay. This up here is extremely handy, by the way. One turn remaining. Okay. Pardon me. So let's get you down here now, gathering from the hut, and let's get you to go and explore this right now. What do you mean you're not qualified to do that? Oh. Maybe you get like an archaeologist later. <laughs> Crack spends the day reconstructing the sawmill that had collapsed into these remains. Transforms into a permanent sawmill? That's cool as heck. Let's keep, let's keep you exploring, my friend. Ah, we found the little sheep friends. Hello. Let's plop down the old pasture right here. Oh, there's so many of them. Explore these remains to discover a positive or negative random effect. Cool. Okay. Or you can send a druid to analyze the remains. If you have two druids, you can make a negative effect positive. I can't wait to get deeper into this game. Wait, am I constructing a fresh pasture and not the... Okay, this is the packed mobile one. Good. Great. What's up, Brownie Point? How you doing? You think that's a rank two druid? 
and not two druids. That probably makes more sense, honestly. Uh, I still have quite a few turns, so let's explore the full map here before we settle down and grab resources. Unexpected encounter. By focusing their attention near the remains, Crack makes mental contact with a nearby entity. There's someone struck. Wait, there's someone stuck under a fallen beam within these remains. Crap goes looking for the trapped pupil and finds them in a large room. The rescuee is injured, but is delighted to join your tribe. Cool! Don't forget to heal them. A new pupil has joined your tribe. An unexpected earthquake surprised Sylve tribe gatherer. The Vagary destroyed all the buildings of their tribe and buried Sylve in rubble inside the remains where they thought they were safe. Speaking of, Sylve's Salma must be up nearby and in a terrible state. Sylve dreams of becoming a woodcutter. The tribe now has three pupils. As such, there's an extra mouth to feed. If your harvesting is insufficient, the harvest hut can be improved. All right. The first improvement reduces the cycle to two turns, which will make them much faster. This improvement's cost resources, but will be permanent. Cool. Oh my goodness. All right. I don't know how to heal you. They never actually taught me how to heal. So let's just get you to start chopping. And then crack. Let's actually get you to continue exploring. No, other way around. Let's get our new friend to explore. And let's get crack to head. No, no, no. I lied. Go get wood. Because almost certainly the upgrade is going to cost us. It's going to cost us cotton. Okay. Another remain? Incredible. Crack is now an engineer! Congratulations, little buddy. Mobile buildings constructed are more compact. That's incredible. There we go. You were worried about the Tetris game. Well, good news. Muffled sobbing guides Crack's footsteps into an abandoned building. Though they make their way even further and seem to get even closer, the corridors remain devoid of life. Unable to determine the source, Crack calls out. The sobbing ceases instantly and a surprised voice resonates in their mind. Who are you? Your fellows have left me here for so long. They always leave me. You are no different. You want to leave, don't you? Indeed, my voyage is not over. Stay longer. Wait. And then there's a scream and all buildings are damaged? Oh, that was a bad one. Okay. I can't repair this because I don't have metal. Cool! Spooky. Sylv is now a woodcutter. Great. Sylv. Alright, take our food consumption lower. So how much is it to upgrade this? The upgrade is 140 wool. Okay. So let's get you... Oh, interesting. Only you can construct things, eh? So, one of two things can happen. One, I can either construct a mine. If I construct a mine, then I can produce my own ore, and I can use my ore to repair these buildings. Okay. Or alternate plan, I can construct a market.
And with the market, I can just purchase the ore with the resources that I also have. I think I want to construct a mine. So let's wait until we have 240 wool. Actually, let's do one more cycle of wood here. Let's get you to start collecting wool. Let's get you to help out over here. Actually, yeah, let's switch then. Those tasks synced up really nicely. Costs 140 wool to upgrade. Great. So let's get you to start harvesting just a little bit of ore while we wait. Am I staying roughly equal or am I slowly declining? I can't actually tell. <clears throat> Pardon me. Was that the adjacency bonus that they were talking about? I only needed the one there. So let's see if I can't repair you. Okay, that has been fully repaired. I need 140 wool to upgrade this. It looks like I don't actually need this friend to be here. <clears throat> Interesting. So you harvest wool wood faster than anyone else. Um... What does it take to repair this? Oh, buddy. Out of curiosity, how do I heal them? I wonder if I just like have them sit down and rest for a turn. I just don't understand. You need potions, which are expensive to make? Okay, thank you. So I can't heal them, even though it says... Even though it says, take the time to heal them. That's not something I have the ability to do myself. Okay, so I won't worry about it then. Thank you. So I don't think I need a builder in order to upgrade this. But I don't actually know. So I'm just going to stay here and harvest one more turn of ore. Let's find out. Nope, you don't even need it. Okay, great. Thank you, my love. Okay, so this should be way faster now. We should see our food start moving, trending upwards, if you will. Ooh, level two fruit gatherer. Good job. Wait, we already knew that. Level two engineer now. Ooh. Let's make repair cheaper. Hilariously, as we go over here to repair things now.
All right, and then with this, I should be able to win. Oh, I'm going to have to reconstruct this a little bit closer. That's fine. Uh, let's actually... Let's actually do that right now. Rather than get the last 35 out of this, let's just move it down where we have 800. Alright, wood is covered. We're just going to keep producing food this whole time. Yeah, we should have this. Our food is trending up, which is great. Bog has been exhausted. You don't have any more food to find, do you? You're collecting too much wood. I think it's all fine, actually. I mean, I suppose I can always repack this. Move it back up there. Nah, it's fine. We'll just get... Uh, Yeah, you can see the, the trip they have to take for food now. 200 on the dot. I think we just call it a day. It's just a tutorial, right? Let's head to the eye. Now, these did not get any smaller. Which I'm a little bit disappointed in. I was told they were going to be tiny. All right. GG! Victory. The journey was particularly difficult, probably the hardest journey of their lives. But the tribe made it to the center of the eye in extremis. I don't know what that means. Here, Silva's reunited with their old tribe, who had thought the Psy had decided on Silva's destiny. The two tribes meet. Crack, no longer able to sit still, hurries to the center of the group to declare their new prowess to any who will listen. Crack is now an engineer. Sion watches with a benevolent gaze. Quickly, a band of small pupils grab Sion by the hand and drag them towards the crowd. The great meeting can commence. Chapter 4, The Greatest Pie in the World An extremist means they were really, really struggling. They're in great distress. Okay. You know by now that pupils love food. Some of them have very refined palates. Learn to prepare delicious and nutritious dishes and improve your pupils' culinary talents. Meet nice pupils and recruit Billy the Baker in a joyful adventure of buddies and taste buds, okay? Is in extremis Latin? Oh, it's a Latin phrase meaning in the furthest reaches or at the point of death in Wikipedia. Hmm. Pupils are omnivorous. Omnivorous? Let's go with the second one. All these quests sound wonderful, yeah. They eat almost anything. They go to prosperous regions where food is never a problem. In some regions, the lands are dry and agriculture is not an option. In those areas, all tribes have a trapper. In other regions, game is rare. Pupils in those areas generally grow crops and don't eat meat. But throughout their exodus, pupils must learn to adapt to any biome they come across. They eat what they can find. Between two halts, they often walk for a long time before being able to stop and restock. 
they often need to leave with a large stock of food to not fall ill during their travels. Often, the smaller tribes carry fruit in their bundles, enough to keep everyone fed. But as soon as the tribe gets bigger, it is not uncommon to see new silhouettes. Pupils become cooks and preparing much more nourishing rations. Hmm. Since the beginning of the Exodus, Raya, Yu, and Sudas have only eaten raw pepkins. None of them ever had to cook. However, during their voyage, they excitedly spoke about all of the succulent dishes they would find at the Great Meeting. Such variety, such flavor. The three travelers can't wait to get to the eye with the large banquet tables and, jo and joyful songs. Sudas, in particular, is looking forward to the prospect of meals, sometimes even dreaming of the banquets and fresh hot loaves of breads passing between hands. Here is your caravan, along with the three pupils. The tribe has just arrived at the halt and has chosen a strategic location set up. They still have pepkins in stock, but there won't be enough to feed everyone before the journey. Search the map. Okay. My only complaint about the navigation in this game is because the map is fixed... When you're zoomed out, it won't actually let you move. So I want to use Wazda to navigate around. But you have to zoom in if you want to go to those corners. As opposed to Civ, it'll show the edge of the map and you can like zoom down to center. Like I want to be able to center these blocks on the screen when I issue an order. It's a very minor complaint though. All right, select the next path. This one is going to take us, oh, 300 soup. Rather, 300 rations, 120 wool, and 120 ore. The tribe will need to go through a mountain pass. Progress will be slow. You'll need a lot of rations to save off hunger. You'll also need to keep warm and some crampons to safely cross. I imagine that's um, some type of like sticky bit for metal. The tribe needs to prepare 300 rations to make it through the pass. Food spikes. Okay, that's what I thought. Given the resources in this halt, Raya. Raja or Raya? Has already built a bakery. Oh, they have, have they? The bakery is a building that lets you make rations using cereal. Bread is a base recipe that all pupils can make. Build a farm to harvest cereals. Okay, let's take a look at what skill tree we have for our people. That's completely in my way. Okay. Raja is our main harvester. Sudas is our builder. And you is our harvester. Well, sorry. It's our chopper gatherer. All right. Let's get everyone to explore out here. A hill with some stone. Okay, you keep moving there. So what do you do it again? You harvest things. You don't really know how to build. Actually, let's get you back. So I want to construct a farm that's nearby, eh? Oh, interesting. There are special tiles that need to be irrigated on. What does you do? You also harvest things for me. Great. This is the quantity of cereals on this fertile soil hex. When it reaches zero, this hex will no longer be usable for grain. and You'll need to build a farm somewhere else. Oh, cool. Sign somebody to build there. Okay. Uh, I have other things I'd like to construct first. Can I construct a chop chop? I can construct a sawmill here. I also need to construct a pasture. So I know I'm going to need wood. So let's just build a permanent sawmill here.
You like to collect stone and stuff. Gotcha. I don't actually have the ability to do that yet, so let's get you chopping trees. And then you are the one who does better gathering. Okay. I don't actually know if that works for farming, though. I think that might be harvest, but that's fine. <clears throat> oh, I got that wrong. Sudas is my builder. I need them to construct a wool thing down here. Pasture. Pasture requires wood. Um, so let's actually just move you here, because by the time you get there, it'll be fine. You is the one who's going to start doing this. Great. Okay. I wonder if it's worth it for me to do nothing for a turn. If I wanted to make a quarry, I wonder if I'd have to exhaust this forest first or destroy... I probably can't build it in the bog, so I'd probably have to destroy the plains. Interesting. And there you have it. We now have bread, or pardon me, we now have whatever in stock. Sign Raja to the bakery. Shortly. This is the bakery. I thought it was make rations. Oh, I guess I can make bread. Oh, <clears throat> so one bread consumes 20 of what whatever and gives you 36 rations. Interesting. The recipe for bread uses 20 things to produce 36. If there's enough in stock, they'll stop it. Okay, that's fine. The bakery is fueled by wood. Oh, wow. If you don't if you're not constantly producing wood, the cook will stop producing rations. Sure. Pupils love delicious food and will always eat rations before pepkins. So it looks like I need somebody constantly producing farm stuff, and then I have you running around collecting wood, then collecting iron. All right, you're going to be really busy, Sudas. You're going to be really busy. This is very much a game of limited resources and choice. Yeah, I like it. This is scratching a, uh, a very particular part of my brain, and I like it a bunch. Oh, what's this? A friendly caravan has arrived at the halt. It's another tribe of pupils on their journey. This caravan is not halting. They're simply crossing the region. Tribes that meet on their way to the eye often help each other out, so it's always worth the time it takes to meet them. Friendly tribe will offer help in exchanges. Okay, sure. Oh! Billy has heard of your tribe and thinks that maybe you could use a baker's skill. Wait, do I get a new friend? Every time you meet up, there's always three options. You can only choose one, so choose wisely. Raja, you, and Sudas could use some extra help. Bill would like to join! Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Bill. Tell me about yourself. The 
Billy is an experienced baker and knows several recipes. If a cook has a higher level, their recipes will be more efficient. Raja offers Billy their spot in the bakery. Incredible. New recipe, gingerbread. Okay. Oh, I love it. So 12 and 12 equals 59. That's absurd. Okay. So... Start chopping me some food, or some trees, Raja. Billy, you're going to be our baker now. And uh, you keep collecting me wool. No building available to harvest this resource. What? Oh. Peoples without housing can't work. You can't have more workers than you have available places to stay. What does this mean? What have I done wrong? Thank you so much, Joe. Hey, what's up, Shivam? No, this is a different hex based game than we were playing yesterday. This one is much more of a puzzle game. As opposed to like a, a resource and city builder. You need to house all of your working pupils. Sure. How do I build a house? It hasn't told me to do that. Do I just like kick one out now? Did I miss a part of the tutorial? The graphics are very red. It's very stylized. You can only have three working at a time. Oh. That's actually fascinating. It's kind of frustrating that I can't see... I can't see the options to build. Mm hmm. That's fine. Okay. So let's get Sudas to move up here. Let's get you, Raja, to chop chop some wood for us, right? Appendix allows pupils to work. Oh, okay. I should actually get Sudas to chill around there then. Sit here for a second. How much does it cost to construct a camp? Oh, I can afford it right now. Incredible. Okay, uh, let's actually get you to stop for a second. Let's do, sorry, one full harvest. Let's just build it right away. I have to destroy one of these two things. Uh, you know what? I'm going to destroy these berries. Sudas was my builder, right? So I'm getting the experience on the right place? I am. Good. Good, good, good. The whispers creep you out a little. Yeah, you're not the first person to mention that, Arclight. We are the whisperer. So our job is to get in and whisper commands to people. But you're you're not incorrect in saying it's a little weird. The four pupils can now work. Everyone will be able to get work done. All right. Assign something to the lazy pupil. Hey, now. That's nobody's fault at all. All right, we're out of wood, which is bad. Choose... The recipes for Billy and harvest the necessary thing. Okay, I've already done that. All right, Sudas. Uh, let's get you down here collecting more wool till we have enough wood to construct a mine. So now I have wood being harvested. I have crops being harvested. And we are creating rations.
Do I need to upgrade the bakery here? How can I do this? Oh, that's kind of cool. So we figured out what the books are. I don't actually see the books being tracked anywhere. All baker's recipes are unlocked. Cool. Ooh, wood consumption reduced. That's exciting. This is neat. It's very much a puzzle game. All right, we have 250 more of this available, so... We need to get another farm pretty quickly here. Is Whisper's sound effect or interface? I'm not entirely certain, unfortunately. Waiting for resources. Okay, let's get you just making bread. Okay, time to make another, which one is it? Another farm here. I could also make a mobile farm. Fascinating. That might be really cool to make in the future. The problem I'm having is the initial investment to make a mobile farm. I guess it, it pays for itself in the long run, but it's uh, quite expensive. All right, so your next job is going to be to construct a mine. The mine requires a hundred wood. Do I have another step after this? I do. So actually, it might be worth it. I think I have the time. It might be worth it to make a stone quarry first. Um, Let's go ahead and... Head back to collecting wool in the meantime. While we wait for more wood. And then we'll get stone. Then after stone. And hopefully these trees get exhausted by then. 600! Oh no. Alright, well there's a lot of wood here. That's actually good. You have to devote Tarkov Tetra space to mobile buildings as you continue forward. That's fine though. It seems... <clears throat> it seems... More resource efficient, right? Because, like, you could carry a bunch of raw resources with you, or you could carry the building, which represents a bunch of raw resources. So if you think about, um, let's say, it costs 100 wood to place down a building, it takes a bunch of turns to construct it. The space that it occupies in your inventory represents more than that, if that makes sense. I don't know. It seems worth to me. I'm sure somebody has made, like, a, a formula somewhere, crunching all those numbers. How are you doing, Raja? Have you leveled up yet? You have! Great. I hope you like chopping wood, because that's all you're going to do forever. <laughs> uh, maybe we don't have the turns? Oh, maybe we can. We'll see. Like, we have enough food right now. So, that being the case, if I constructed a quarry... And got you down here collecting more wool. Do I need more wool? I don't think I do. Let's just have you cook a little bit longer. All right, let's get Billy down here now, harvesting some stone for us. I can only have one person in the wood camp, is that correct? Yeah, okay. So the goal is to wait to have enough stone that I can actually construct an mobile quarry. It's going to cost us 120 wool. So let's go get some more wool. <clears throat> Everybody change places!
Oh, this is going to be very tight. How many turns do I have left? 41? I think I can pull it off. Alright, let's do one more drop-off harvest. Okay, now we want to move you up to here. Okay, I want to get this to 120 and get you back baking afterwards. Somebody just level up? They did. Fantastic. Stonks! <laughs> Alright, so getting metal early, that's actually kind of cool. Oh, that's neat. You get an adjacency bonus. Plus one per turn. Oh, right. Sorry. The other reason why I think the devoted Tarkov Tetra space is great is the upgrades are permanent. So if you can have an upgraded building that follows you for a while, that seems like it gets very strong over time, right? Pupils working in this building no longer need to leave to harvest. Incredible. Incredible. remembering making too many mobile buildings oh, i imagine it's a it's a risk reward thing like that's the whole nature of this game right all right sudas is now an engineer Ooh. okay so they can either be an engineer or not plus 10 per harvest for mobile buildings constructed okay the mobile buildings are much more compact i mean there we go so I just finished that, unfortunately. All right, let's start mining. And what does it cost me to upgrade this? It costs me wood and wool, which I can't actually afford unless I switch some things up. So I've got 31 turns. You know what? I can do it. Let's upgrade this right now. That'll make it faster for me to upgrade. Really, really pushing my luck on this one. But that's okay. One more harvest and we're good. Great. Okay, so I've got all of the metal we need to move on. We've got all the food we need to move on. All I need to do now is collect a little bit more wool. And we'll have completed this level. Let's ask ourselves what we're going to have in the next area. What do I need afterwards? I'm going to need wool and metal again and way more rations. Okay. So let's uh, let's over collect on wool before we leave. I'm going to end up having to leave behind a little bit of pepkins and a little bit of cereal. Let's see. We'll see how much trouble I get into for that. Alright, we have rations. We have quite a few rations. What if I stopped? What if you went and got me a little bit more metal? And what if you stopped and got me a little bit more stone? Minus 24 per turn is no laughing matter. Alright, let's do one full harvest cycle for both. and That'll be the end of it. Okay, let's hand in stone and then that'll be it. Because I'm just looking at the stacks... Ore has been depleted. Okay. Stone has been depleted. Okay. 
Cyril has been depleted. Great. All right, let's get out of here. Two turns left. Wow. All right, we uh we really pushed it there, didn't we? Mobile line. Mobile bakery. Oh, it's a two by two. Oh, I want that metal ore. Heck. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is fun. This is interesting now. Now we're gaming. Okay. Do, 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 do. Right. <laughs> is it weird that I love this? Like, I unironically love this. Is that better? No, that's, in fact, worse. So I'll be wasting a little bit of wood, a little bit of pumpkin, and a little bit of grain. Oh! I'll waste no grain! Never mind! How dare you enjoy a game? I know, right? That ain't bad bad at all so we'll find out exactly what the penalty is for this when we get to the next area the eye is so close you can almost see it from here but an endless plane separates the tribe from the protective cirque Sudas knows that trying to cross this plane without preparation would mean saying goodbye to the banquets of the grand meeting okay of the great meeting sure so i need lots of stuff all right lots of metal lots of wool lots of rations Help the tribe set up in the best possible conditions. Install the appendices, then the buildings. Help them in their halt to save the tribe. Okay. I think I want to go here. What's this? A sacred site. These places are filled with spiritual energy and allow pupils to commune with the spirits. The spirits will only listen to one request, so choose wisely. Can't believe Snurge is making fun of Joe. Joe! Snurge called you crappy! How dare they? Alright, so I need to get Eunice. Where are you, Eunice? Or Sudis, pardon me. Want to unpack the camp. And let's one of the additional person work. I guess everyone else. Uh, yeah, Billy, you go get that animal. Raja, let's get you chopping some wood. And you, why don't you go commune with the spirits? Oh, Joe! Pupils can pray and the spirits will help them in their journey by offering resources. Pupils can make a grand offering to the spirits who will generally recompense the devotion. Finally, pupils can pillage and take previous tribe's offering. It's an immediate gain of a large number of resources, but vexed spirits will make the tribe pay for their transgression. You can always choose to do nothing and come back. Neat. <clears throat> okay.
We can pray for spices, we can plunder for spices as well as uh, metal, or we can make an offering of food and wood for the unknown. Uh, let's make an offering. That, that sounds kind of cool, actually. People without housing cannot work. What we found now, we found remains. Since Billy has joined the tribe, Raja can't stop watching the baker at work. A deep fascination for Billy's harmonious and skillful movements, conjuring up delightful dishes with a disconcerting ease. The whole tribe is glad for Billy's presence. Raja would like to help Billy perfect the art of baking and find something to help concoct even greater recipes. Okay. A calling horn. You makes their way through the rubble and stumbles upon a courtyard where they find on a promontory? I imagine this is some type of altar. An immense horn. You approaches and blows into the horn with all of their strength. The dark, deep sounds can be heard for miles around. However, not long after catching their breath, they hear a terrible crumbling sound as they return to the tribe. They learn that the sound demolished the stone bridge that allowed access across the halts. Okay. Now, no longer can friendly caravans come and visit us. Ah, you've doomed us! You, you fool! A promontory is a natural stone peak. Oh, like in the Lion King. Is that a promontory? All right, uh, where is Sudas? Sudas is our builder, correct? Yes. Uh, I need you to unpack our bakery now. No, actually, I need you to construct a farm before you unpa unpack the bakery. You're going to be very busy. Wait, hold on. What's this? At least one pupil has nothing to do. Well then, why don't you collect some berries? Why don't you also collect some berries? You were the one, they were the one gathering stuff for us, right? Yes, excellent. Okay. So as soon as the farm is constructed, hey, we are, you're an architect. Congratulations. Oh, engineer makes mobile buildings and then you can repair stuff. Okay. Happens both ways. Sure. Make the buildings more sturdy. Everything the light touches is your. As far as the eye. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. All right. Now I'm going to get you to unpack the bakery. What's on it? Food is on it? How can this be? Uh, I think I don't care. I mean, no map goal select. Find spices. Does anyone see spices on the map? Or, I mean, I guess I can get spices from praying. So I was originally going to make an offering, but I guess... It's unknown. I mean, I imagine the game is smart enough that if I give it an offering of food, it'll give me spices as well, but we'll see, right? We'll see what happens. You're now a level two engineer, incredible. Let's make construction costs cheaper better for the long run. Actually, it doesn't do anything for us this game, does it? Uh, Billy is continuing to harvest. Wait, Ansel, who has nothing to do? You have nothing to do. Well, that's not true, is we have a mine right here that we can construct, can't we?
All right, you ready for this offering? Billy, go talk to the spirits. If you click on a resource in the top left corner, it will highlight if a tile contains it. There are no spices on this map. The only way I can get spices is from the gods. Oh, hold on. That's not true. There's a whole area down here we haven't explored yet. Ah. I got 30 extra turns? Dang. See if we've got that down there. Okay, the next thing I need is a permanent wood chop place. Uh, let's build a saw thing. Oh, I can make a mobile one. I don't need a mobile one. I'll build it right here. Can I upgrade you again? I can. There we go. Wood consumption is reduced by 50%. What is this? Remains. Obsolete knowledge. Raja follows the smell of paper and parchment. These runes are an ancient place of wisdom. In one of the few legible books, Raja learns new techniques for communion with the spirits. Well, new isn't the best way to describe these techniques. And Raja is left having to unlearn some of what they knew before. Accumulated knowledge as a fruit gatherer is lost. Oh no. All right, let's take a look at their skill tree. Okay, so they were pre previously a fruit gatherer. Where was that? Oh, fruit gatherer up here. They're starting to lose that knowledge. That's unfortunate. But did I have anybody who was learning to commune with the gods a little bit better? Because that was really cool. All right, you have you have completed construction there. The next thing you have to do is you have to construct a place for wool. We need quite a lot of wool. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a pasture. What do you mean it won't? Oh, there's um there's little seeds there. Ah, that's fine. We don't care. An extra 30 turns is huge. Now, unfortunately, it does appear that there are no spices on this map. So if I want spices, maybe I have to construct the market and purchase them. It's optional. So that's fine. Do you know anything about harvesting? Oh, you do as well. Great. How is this doing? Has it been upgraded? Is there even a source of stone on the map? Oh, that's a stone source. Oh, wait, it has stone and metal. Oh, that's phenomenal. I wonder if we collect both or if you pick one. Okay, you know a thing or two about collecting wool? Can only collect one at a time. Oh, you just kind of tell it which one you want, and it goes from there. Stonks! What did that do? 20% yields? Heck yeah. 
plus one per turn for every adjacent. So that gives us plus two. The plus two actually hilariously nets us what the bakery has. But I'm not too worried about it. Can I upgrade the farm? Yes, I can. That lets this last significantly longer. Probably would have been better if we do it first. Adjacent to water, plus 35% preservation. Cool. All right, we'll just spend all of that. Probably better if that was a mobile farm, but here we go. So this is going to last 70% longer now. I probably wasted resources in a lot of the upgrades I did there, but we're also still just learning. It's fun to sort of click on these and see how they all work. Okay, wool is done. Let's get on down here, get ourselves some metal. Yeah, we're easily on track to just win. You is now a farmer. Heck yeah, there we go. That gets us even more... Even more wheat. Alright, if I try and construct a market, what happens now? as a pack animal, which I have. So the problem I have now, though, is because of where I positioned myself, I'm actually incapable of making a market in order to get spices. Okay. Uh, you know what? That's fine. This is just the tutorial, so let's, uh, let's call this complete. Look at this! Our special extra little friends. Mm. And we leave, and nothing was left behind. What is this game? It looks like a mixture of Minecraft and Civ. Yeah, it's a roguelike city builder puzzle game resource management thing. It's fantastic is what it is. Finally, the tribe has reached the eye. Shortly after getting there, the pupils barely realize Sodas has vanished. Raja follows Billy to the center of the village, where they meet the expert chefs and bakers of all the tribes, who prepare various dishes, each more delicious than the next. It's an incredible choreography to see this troop of cooks work in harmony. Raja is astonished and timidly tries to join in. Billy welcomes Raja with a smile. Like a secondary instrument in a great orchestra, Raja feels uplifted and transforms to fit in this greater whole. Sudas, hiding from sight, grabs various tarts passing by and stuffs them into their mouth, joyful tears in their eyes. It's all so much better than Sudas remembered. Yu takes the time to nap in the shade of the orchards, to the south of the island. Tonight, the celebrations will be at their peak. For now, it is time to savor this moment of calm where the only company you needs is the breeze. This game is rad. This game is absolutely fantastic. I am very quickly falling in love with this game. I'm kind of excited to try a full-on playthrough. Like, reminder, this is still just the tutorial. Or I suppose this is the campaign, rather. Does it tend to repeat? I don't know. We've only been playing for about two and a half hours. They're walking us through the chapters and slowly adding more and more mechanics as we go. So, for example, they only really showed the skill tree and specialization of people as they go there. 
Yeah. So the way it works is you have a map, you have an end destination, a starting destination, very similar to like Slay the Spire. Anyways, you know where you pick a path. Each step in the path requires a certain amount of resources. So in order to complete the map, it goes. And then when you move, you can also carry a certain amount of resources on with you. So something like FTL, there's a press your luck advantage of you want to stay up until a certain point. What else is cool is the game punishes you if you harvest too many of a resource and leave it behind. So I like that as well. You have another thing that you can manage between leaving buildings behind, which is no penalty, or creating mobile buildings that you can bring with you. Oh, I imagine the actual game is going to be a lot harder. Yeah, that, that, that absolutely scans. So how much you want to invest and when you choose to invest and what you choose to invest in might also depend on the path you bring to. So for example, the last time we saw that wool was continuous throughout the paths and so was metal. So investing in, and actually in rations as well. So a mobile farm probably would have made a lot of sense. Seems like this game has a lot of depth to it. The Awkward Octopus. Yo, what's up, friend? Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for four months. Appreciate the continued support. Cheers to you. Reminder, Awkward Octopus was the person who did the wonderful calligraphy card for our birthday. Steam or Epic? I purchased this on Steam. Uh, reminder, if you're ever interested in purchasing games and you want to support the channel, I have affiliate codes for Humble and Epic. Not have an affiliate code for Steam because that is not something that Steam offers. But you do you. If you want to buy a game, you get it wherever you want to get it. Iron Mo has a specific role in the tribe. Oh, we get a druid! Druids get to learn to soothe auras and concoct potions. Analyze remains and save a tribe in distress in this adventure filled with empathy. I love it. All right, before we get started, I have to pee. I've been drinking a lot of fluids today. I'll be right back.
I need to get better at getting into this new chair. I sit down and I just roll away. <laughs> uh. Apparently this game is 30% off on Epic. Ooh, that's good to know, Basil. Thank you. Anyways, hi everybody, we're back. Let's learn about the Horned Chimera. Throughout their exodus towards the eye, tribes make their way through very different lands, and sometimes they go through areas tingling with magic. Ooh, tingle. They find remains from ancient times. They are generally what ancient tribes left behind that magic now inhabits. And one can sometimes find malign spirits inside. Some pupils can communicate with them, others cannot. The sacred lake regions are often filled with sacred sites where pupils interact with spirits. Pardon me. The Great Western Cliff site is the most frequently visited. Other lands seem out of time, untouched by any tribe, as if no one had ever visited them. These are the domains of auras. Okay, we have remains, sacred sites, and auras. So remains is a previous building that broke. A sacred site is a place filled with spirits, and an aura is an untouched, pristine area. Got it. Nature is strong and, luxur and luxuriant. It seems capable of resisting anything, according to legends. Even under the waves, these lands remain unchanged and preserved until the water seeps away. Auras seem to protect their area from everything. The merest bush, the smallest fish, are all untouchable within the aura. Cool! Alright, magical aura, magical energy protects them. Some pupils from their very first cycle discover that they have a special sensitivity. They feel their fellow's emotions much more than other, as if they are naturally more intuitive. Soon enough, they feel the call of the spirits and end up hearing them just as distinctly as they hear the voices of their own tribe. Their form changes to better fit their role. Their head gains two large crooked antlers that lengthen and become more ornate as their process continues. These pupils become druids, admired and respected in all regions. Cool! Iron Moe is one of these delicate pupils whose innate empathy guides them towards a role of healers. I wonder if when we play the, the like the regular game, if when you if there's like a, a hidden skill tree or a hidden uh, attribute tree where much like an oxygen not included or an oxygen not included rather the spirits have a natural tendency that points them in a direction or if they're all generalists and we get to pick afterwards anyways as the tribe is at its last halt before climbing to the eye we feel a terrible distress a pupil and their circle not far from you need help okay Tribe can finish her journey without a worry. Leaves them and sets out alone. Oh. Hello. What's this? Remains. Okay, so let's see how a druid does this. So instead of the first one, we get to analyze it. It'll take a druid three turns to analyze remains, but by the end of these mystical discussions, the tribe knows exactly the effect that exploring the ruin will have and can decide whether to do it or not. Oh, cool! All right. Let's check out the skill tree here, by the way. Yeah, you can now analyze remains. Neat. So you get a druid by going up the herbalist route. Mmm. Here you can read the results of the analysis, include whether or not to send them in. It's a lost library. A good scholar, Iron smells the familiar and reassuring scent of paper and parchment. These ruins are an ancient place of wisdom containing knowledge that could be useful to you. Oh, okay. So I will then explore it. Hooray! Here's the caravan with its three pupils. There's already a camp as the tribe had been larger before. Iron sees that the tribe is ready to welcome the druid with open arms with a bed already set up. Druid can see, even at a distance, two agitated pupils, the quivering mass on the floor. Jimka and Thob shake their arms around in despair as they see the new arrival, not noticing that they already attracted the druid's attention many blinks before. 
Pip, the tribe's architect, is gravely ill and will lose 10 health points per turn without medical attention. Pip will disappear and merge with the breeze. There's no time to lose. And to be as efficient as possible, everyone must work to fix it. Despite being very ill, Pip must join in the work effort. Okay. All right. There's a recipe for a potion. 20 pepkins and 20 spices to make. Also need to construct a dispensary. So Pip is their builder? Pip is their builder. Okay. So Pip, please construct a dispensary. Who's your gatherer? I mean, Iron is the gatherer, so may as well go ahead and grab that ourselves. No building available to harvest? Oh, that's bad. What does... What Thob do? Thob is a cook. Okay. Jimka is a harvester. You know what? Anyone can build a harvest hut, though, right? Oh! Oh, so the dispensary does both. I actually should have made it one closer. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. You can harvest fish? You There's fishing in this game? Go on. Fish gang, indeed. All right, you start gathering spices. You, you just go chill. You just go chill. Aura discovered. Oh. So we can't fish yet, but now that we know the existence of fish, this is a game changer. Objective, concoct a potion. Sure. Well done. A potion has appeared in the stockpile. To consume it, select a sick pupil. And then assign it to them. To consume it, select the sick pupil I have and right click on the caravan or dispensary to assign it to them. Ah! We did it! Pip is alive and well, not in top form, but the architect plans to stick around a lot longer. Okay. Uh, I guess now we win. So to get here, I need 200 metal and 200 wood. Got it. All right. Well, now that you're not dead, I need you to go commune with the aura. Is that correct? How do I do that? Okay. I need our builder to get to work here. Uh, what's our next jump after that? Metal again. So... Uh, let's get our builder to construct us a... I need wool. Wool alo, wool alo. Okay. Temporary. Nope. Hey, three and four fifths. Thank you so much for 18 months. My sub is old enough to do stuff. 
Here's for hopefully another 18. That's very flattering. And a subtle wink, wink, nudge, nudge reminder. This channel is... You don't have to be 18. We're family friendly. The tribe had rations in stock, but they're quickly running low. Harvest some whatever if stock is inefficient. The wave is approaching. You need to get your weight of resources. Okay. Till now, the tribe has been blocked by giant aura. There we go. That's what I thought. This is an aura. Protects the forest and jungles around. Not a single twig can be collected under its influence. As such, Jimka's tribe cannot build a thing. They cannot progress. Not only that, but auras reduce harvesting efficiency of every resource in their zone by 50%. Okay. Feels a protective vibration of the aura tightly wrapped around the zone like a mother sensing any danger. But druids know the language. Iron can soothe this aura, transmit the idea that the tribe will cause no harm to this land, convince the aura to share some resources to help them survive, that the tribe will only take what they need and leave. If they betray the problem, the Psy will take them. I love this game. The exchange between the pupil and the aura lasts five turns. The aura will calm down the first dance movement of the pupil, but if the pupil interrupts the negotiation, be protective again. Okay. At the end of the exchange, the wood aura will be soothed for 20 turns. Okay, so soothing takes 5 turns and will be soothed for 20 turns. We'll also help the tribe by offering a bonus of wood harvest in the area. Oh, cool! Alright, so soothing is going to take 5 turns. I need this wood. I can't do anything about it. You're just asleep. So please go ahead and collect some berries. Wait, hold on. Is one of you better at collecting wood? Nope. How about you, Pip? Ah, you're just a builder. Whatever. You can start chop-chopping some wood here because we really need that. Make some more potions here. All right, let's construct a mine now. I imagine I'll have to make a... Wow, this builder is so fast. How do they do this all in one turn? I need one miner. Oh, hold on. I do not want you to be a miner. I definitely don't want you to be a miner. So not Pip. Who is my gatherer? Jimka is my gatherer? I really want specialists. You know what? Actually, my builder being my miner maybe makes sense. <clears throat> sure. This game is so amazing. Beautiful art style and neat story bits. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm pretty stoked if I'm honest. So how long is it going to take me to do this until you're full on miner, right? Because nobody else had levels in that, right? Mining is down on this tree. Wait, I have a miner. No, I need Jimka. Jimka? Why am I shouting? There we go. That was almost very foolish. <clears throat> is one of my people an axolotl? Basically, yeah. Go ahead and heal here. Quick berries while we wait. There we go. I noticed I I couldn't have imagined they'd want us to go all the way to a miner. So that makes a lot of sense. Have a good one, Suno. Happy birthday tomorrow, friend. Congratulations on 40. Tremendous milestone. Alright, now we 
Let's hit space bar a whole bunch. Much long. Mountain has been depleted. Wait, does that mean I'm screwed? Because I don't have a miner because I had someone else collecting the resources? That'd be very, very, very bad. And would require me to restart. Oh, no, no, we're fine. Oh, never mind. Or, or they all line up perfectly. Oh, wow. 50% chance of remains appearing once a resource is fully exploited? That's incredible. That's so cool. So I can harvest faster or I can start getting these extra books per cycle, which we're getting a little bit anyways. If I do this and then that, they work together. Alright, what do I want to bring with me? Let's stay just a little bit longer here. Want to make sure we have some extra wood, some extra metal when we get to our destination, especially because the one after this requires wood, rations, and metal. There's only 40 more metal in there anyways, right? So I can't get, oh, is, uh, does this need to be soothed again? I think it does. Collect some more spice. Alright, we'll collect one more spice and we'll leave. Alright, let's call it there. Head to the next area. Oh, neat. Good shape. Good shape. Should be able to take everything, actually, here. Yeah, easy peasy. Because we had no buildings to take with us, right? I guess I could have stayed slightly longer if that's the case. Uh, nah, it doesn't matter. This region is filled with mystical energy. And once again, the tribe has no other choice than to set up camp in a magical place. Cool. Alright, so we've got berries there. I see an aura up ahead of us. What's this? These animals are called seagulls. They are cowardly and noisy, always in flocks, and they screech all day long as if sharing the latest news. Rain and earthquakes quickly shut them up, and they can often be seen fleeing. Okay. Oh, I can hunt them. The more discreet pupils take on the form of hunters to collect meat from these plump chickens without scaring off their neighbors. Jimka is one of these hunters. The meat is then prepared by a cook in a cookhouse and transformed into rations. Neat. Build a hunting lodge and a cookhouse. Well, let's start here. Uh, first things first, I need... Iron to go in and soothe this. Hip is our builder, so I have a couple of adjacent things here. Uh, I need one of these things. I guess I have to destroy these berries, because I need one of these things first off. 
to be a camp. Which I cannot construct. Can I unpack a camp? I'll unpack the camp here. Jimka is our miner. You also have a little bit of gathering. What about you, Bob? Okay, yeah, you explore, and then Jimka is going to hang out here and chop chop some wood. Oh my goodness, there's so many burbs. Just burbs for days. Oh, Amnimal. What is this? This is a sacred site. Okay, let's get you to bring this home. Oh, it has to walk all the way back and then head back after? That's fine. Already analyzed. All right, let's read it. What, do, what does it do? This is a site of a Horn of Plenty. This place has 200 resources, or whatever you want them to be. Oh my god, that's incredible. Uh, I wonder what I want it to be. Maybe rations? Probably rations. Sorry, where, how did I make that happen? There are 200 of whatever I wanted them to be. Where did that, where did that go? <clears throat> okay, I guess it, I guess it's fine. Oh, the camp is already done. I'm, I'm just sitting here wasting time. All right, I need a camp. Need a hunting lodge, right? Can I make a mobile one or no? Not even close. Okay. Is Jimka my hunter? Jimka's my hunter. Kip is now a level 3 architect. Incredible. This people only takes one turn to build, no matter where they are on the map. Incredible! Alright, let's do that. That seems very strong. Okay, so Pip is now done. And that means the next thing that we want is an iron mine, which I can put here or there. Uh, let's actually get you chopping wood at, for the time being. Somebody taking damage? What is killing? What? How are you getting hurt? This is an old engineering construction site. Exploring it would probably lead to discovering some sort of treasure. A mobile pasture. Incredible. Wait. Pip died from hunger? No! Pardon? Uh, one of my people died? Well, that's new. Oh, everyone's dying of hunger. Oh. You don't eat meat, huh?
Can I restart? I wish I could restart more easily. Oh my god! When I restart, I have to go all the way here? Okay, that honks. Brutal. Well, there's our first roguelike experience, friends. Give yourself a little heal there. All right, everybody's safe. Let's get you over this way. I don't have enough wood to construct an iron mine, do I? Do you have enough to construct a lumber camp? Pip! Uh, move over this way. Uh... Was you? Was you? You're collecting food. How about you? What are, what are you doing? So uh, this is actually a sign to me that I should probably collect way more food. Before I just kind of peace next time, right? Okay, let's just power through this. Pip has nothing to do. Uh, gathering resources. Okay, let's get you back to harvesting more food. All right, now, Thob, were you the one who liked to mine? No. Jimka's the one who liked to mine. Great. Okay, Jimka. Get in here. Become a miner. No. this quarry quarry no it wasn't supposed to be a quarry oh I made a mistake oh, I made a hilarious mistake whatever collect some stone no that's that's just bad that's just bad I made a mistake oh I made a foolish mistake hip I'm sorry build the actual building I wanted you to have uh, let's get you over this way Let's get Thob going to work out here, chop chopping wood. Sloppy! Because I'm going too fast. Pip is now an architect. Fantastic. Pip, you can now build from anywhere. Hilariously, uh, that extra building did make it faster for me. To, you know, do other things. Alright, Pip, go and harvest food for me. Jimka, go ahead and start harvesting metal. How many more turns until the aura is done? Two? Okay. Okay. 
Do I have a cook? Bob likes to cook. Okay. Pip, can you make us a kitchen cookhouse? How much is a mobile? Yeah, we don't have wool. Cost wood and stone. Okay, so we're probably going to want to do that earlier next time around. I don't think I actually have enough metal if I want to make a kitchen this time. Unless I show up with zero metal next time. I think we want to get a cookhouse down as quickly as possible last time. We're just going to have so many more berries. We left this map with 300 berries last time. We're going to be leaving closer with... Uh, closer to, rather. Minor bonus. Let's go ahead and get you this one. Yeah, the sooner I can leave here, the more food we have when we leave. So I could leave right now with 100 extra wood. I could leave with 700 food and like zero metal. I think that's okay. Let's see what it looks like if we did try and bounce. Because it's a it's a it's just a temporary thing, right? Uh, one second, please. Hi, friends. Sorry about that. My uh, dad called. Just wanted to check in and see how I was doing, which was very sweet. All right. I feel like we're in a significantly better spot if we go ahead with 900 food. I think the chances of starving to death are substantially lower. Uh, while we could leave the map with a little bit more metal and a little bit more wood, I think 
Um, I think considering how we died previously, this is fine. And I'm going to be pretty happy with this. Okay, so let's try this again. This time without the death. All right, so we're going to go in a slightly different order this time. First things first, let's get the cookhouse down. Never mind. First things first, let's get the harvest hut down. So we're going to have two people doing work. One, we're going to make the harvest hut. Two, uh, what do you do, Thob? Thob is our cook. Uh, Jimka needs to go... This is fine. All right, we need you to soothe. I guess you two just start collecting wood. Jimka's our cook, so we want to leave them nearby. Jimka's our harvester. Let's get our cook to start exploring a bit here. As you get older and older, I love my random phone parent phone calls more and more. I know it's tough. It's 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 tough when you're streaming. When you're like, yo, I'm like this isn't really a job where I can just take a 30 minute break and have a nice long conversation. But uh, it was still very thoughtful. All right, 24 food per turn means I can last. Let's do some math. Oh, not quite 40 turns. 30, 30, yeah, well, we have plenty of time now, so I don't need to rush it quite that hard. Uh, one pupil has more stuff. Pip. Uh, Pip, let's get you to unpack that camp now. I'll put the cookhouse there. You'd watch the chair for 30 minutes? Yeah, that's, that's, that's flattering. And some of you say that, but I don't think the majority of you would stick around for 30 minutes of phone. Let's be real. All right, you're scouting. You continue to scout. You go investigate. So I'm curious if... I'm curious if... Um, this is like very roguelike in the fact that every time you explore it, if it gives you a different event, or if it's seeded, if this is the same one as last time. So last time I got a mobile um, harvest thing. Wait, Harvest Hut is not the thing I wanted here. Crap, this is the wrong building chat. I didn't want a Harvest Hut. I wanted a hunting camp. I have made a mistake again. Oh, that's very upsetting. Well, now I'm sad. I'm not scooping it up. I just need to slow down a bit. hard to find good chill streams. Well, that's very flattering. Uh, you're analyzing stuff. Who's doing nothing? Are you doing nothing? Pip has nothing to do. Harvesting wood. All right, Pip, let's try that again. Hunting lodge. 100 wood. Ah, I screwed up. It's fine. We have more time this time anyway, so it's not like it's a big deal. Um... Cookhouse has to be adjacent. There's nothing saying the harvest camp has to be here. The harvest camp could actually be up there. Or even right here. No, that's where the mine is going to go. Very frustrated. Is this game similar to Frostpunk? Of the many comparisons I've heard in games, I'd say this is the least similar to Frostpunk. Uh, both in tone as well as in execution. So this is a roguelike city builder resource management game where you need to get from point A to point B within a certain amount of turns. If you played FTL, so after X amount of turns, so in this case, after 130 turns, this entire area will be destroyed. Within that time, I need to collect 300 rations, 250 metal, and 250 wood or else I die. And it's game over. Now, mind you, you can bring excess resources with you to the next area. As your people do work, you level up, you have skill trees, and that's cool and good. Like, your people get more specialized as you give them jobs, so there's a little bit of, like, micromanagement, making sure that certain people do certain jobs because they're more efficient or they have certain, like, bonuses they get by 
leveling up the tree. Um, it's a sort of like risk versus reward or press your luck style game as well. You know what Pip is going to do? Pip is going to make a sawmill here. And then this person, when they're done exploring, Bob, when Bob is done exploring, Bob come back and chop some trees. Actually, you know what? Go go and eat another health potion before you die. Pip. I thought I thought literally Pip, I thought I signed you to chop chop. No, iron oh, that's what happened. Okay, Pip go heal. Um this is the mobile pasture. Okay, this is the same as the last game. Let's go ahead and investigate that. Thank you for the explanation. No problem. Okay, we've received a mobile pasture. Now, mobile pasture is handy if I want wool. There is no wool on this map. So if I understand correctly, I mean, I guess I can use it to get this pack animal, but I don't actually know if that helps me in any meaningful way. Sorry, actually, Thob, you collect wood here. Jimka, collect berries. Thob, collect wood. Irene, go investigate this. And Pip, Pip just healed, right? Pip is actively healing. What do you mean Thob has nothing to do? Bob, go chop wood. Oh, you were going to sit there and try and full heal. All right. Uh, yeah, go get me some wood while we wait. I love. Okay, now where's Pip? I feel as though Thob is not working in the correct place. Oh, these are protected by Aura. Oh, I see the problem. I didn't sued those trees. So while they're chopping trees, they came all the way down here to do it. Okay, that's on me. Oh, amazing. Okay. So, um... Let's go soothe that. I understand now. How long before I can get Pip to make a cookhouse? Cookhouse is going to cost us a hundred... Oh, jeez. Okay, I'm actually still pretty far from that. So, new plan. No berries. I still need to get berries there. How long until I can construct a mine? Okay, a hundred wood. Wait, oh, I interrupted that. Crap. Keep soothing. Keep soothing. That's my bad. I 
can make it right here. That's 200 metal? Okay. What's on there? Berries are on there? I've got access to 500, 600. Okay, I think we're fine. To destroy some berries here. Now, who was it who loved to mine? Was it Thimka? Yeah, Thimka loved to mine. Great. Go collect that. You keep collecting the wood from here. Iron has done that. Go soothe. Okay. What a delicate dance we're doing right here. This is uh, really quite challenging. Okay, now continue to collect berries for me. Okay, so now Pip should have enough. Where Pip at? Pip should have enough to make the cookhouse. So now that the cookhouse is done... Bob is the cook. Is that correct? Yes. Jimka is the one who likes to harvest. Oh, harvest both. Okay. You're still collecting berries. That's fine. We'll do one more turn of berries. This is great. This is great and kind of challenging, and I love it. All right, needs wool. I don't have wool at all, but I do have access to recipes. I don't think that actually helps me. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, Pip. Pip is my builder. Um, Pip, we don't need more metal. Yes, we do. We need 250 metal. Great. So you just go harvest some metal for me. Because for the rest of the game, we're going to be collecting metal. We're going to be making rations. So those two people are spoken for. Which means Pip is now my gatherer. And Irene is going to be my soother. Alright, rations are now being gathered. Is that correct? All right, I think we've done it. I think we've done it. That was um, actually kind of shockingly tight. Soothe for seven more turns. Soothe for three more turns. So let's get... Oh, Irene's up there. That's amazing. So Irene can actually soothe for themselves. Hi, little buddy. Actually, let's head this way. No, let's soothe it. So they want to go all the way up there now to figure their life out. Or I can just make another mine right adjacent to it. What does the mine do if it's adjacent to it? Gain multiplier times one. So I could use wood. I've got a ton of wood to figure that out. That's not a big deal. I can just go chop wood and figure it out. Or I can just carry it the long way. I think either one is fine, honestly. Wait, what are you doing? Jimka's returning resources. Oh, this needs to be soothed. Crap. Um, heck. Yeah. 
All right, you're continuing to cook. You're just waiting on meat right now. Meat will arrive. I just need to make sure that's continuously soothed. And having the druid adds a whole other level of complexity to this, which is really quite tough. Okay, that's done. Don't need any more metal. Let's start grabbing wood now. We pray we get 50 stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't actually think I need any of these. They are hurt. Don't forget to heal them. Nah, that's good. We're good. We're good. So how do we fish? If we want to fish. We need to put a harvest building there, eh? All right. So yeah, let's just chop trees. And then I, I think we're, that's a GG. Or maybe not. No, we have the rations. We have everything we need. More food never hurts, I guess. Just like we kind of solved for food. But you're not wrong. Oh. Go soothe again. This is going to need to be soothed right after, right? Wait, what is happening to all of my wood? This is consuming four wood per turn. Right, so if I have my, if my soothe things ever turn off, it's really bad. Can I preventively soothe? No, I sure can't. Going to work. Yeah, the other reason I didn't grab the food is they'll eat rations first. So if we drop under rations and they start eating food anyways, we've got a bigger problem than just that. I, I think at that point we're probably just screwed. A new bakery will happen soon. Downpour. Okay, that's bad. Each turn, the rain causes a lake or bog to flood. Plains near it can be flooded. The bogs near lakes can become lakes. Pupils have minus one MP. Oh, that's bad. All right, let's just get our wood done, and then hopefully we can get out of here. Oh, got a bonus there. What's this? New recipe or new efficiency? Less meat, and it lets us use up our berries to get even more rations. I'm okay with that. Okay, I can probably lay off the food. I just need... I need more wood. There we go! Alright, we're done! We did it! Oh. Bring it all. Uh, or I guess leave exactly three leaves behind. That's not bad. That's pretty, that's pretty efficient. GG! We finished all five chapters. The eye stands before them finally. Jimka and Thob share a look of relief. They had both lost hope. The pupils wipe tears from their eyes, but they are filled with new energy as they race their way up the eye. Arriving at the summit, they see caravans popping up around the eye at the same time. The immense... 
feeling of cohesion recharges them for their descent to the center. Far away on the beach, a pupil with flamboyant feathers makes grand gestures towards them and seems to be waiting for them. The tribe immediately recognizes Croc, whose legendary rivalry with Pip had kept them motivated throughout the journey. Iron Mo let them get ahead. Some tribes arrive in much worse state, and it's always good to help them, those who need it. It's also a good opportunity to collect some salts from the beaches of the eye. They always come in handy. Tonight, Iron Mole will once again tell the tale of the seven apples to the demanding young pupils. The legend of these mystical creatures, ancestors of the pupils, that are said to hide in the hearts of auras. Young pupils, young pupils will learn how, for the last few blinks of the cycle, Iron still hears them as if the waves were not there. And will punctuate this revolution with a dramatic throw of salt into flames, surprising the young means and amusing the elders. This is a lot of wonderful world building. Absolutely. The words are... I, I, I definitely stumble over the sentences. They're a little bit clunky. So, am I the only one who says pupil as sort of like a, a, like a little wink wink there? How things are called the eye. And pupil both means student, but pupil is also an eye thing. Ah, isn't that very clever? Um, let's take a very short break from this, and I'm going to have some lunch. Joe brought me some Thai food. That's right, Joe, with the uh, little wave done dance thing. Yeah, I think of it, it's got to be a pun, right? That's got to be a pun. I can't be the only one who sees that, right? All right, let's throw on some big giant circles. All right, everybody. Time measured as blinks, right? So today's lunch is leftover Thai food, which I'm very excited about. We have some Pad Thai. We have some... Um, what's the curry we're eating, sweetie? We have a Penang, and we've got just some, like, stir-fried chicken cashew stuff. Oh, already salivating. I'm so excited. So how y'all doing, everybody? What's up? What's new? What's happening? Hope you're having a, the coziest day. You want Pad Thai now? It's good stuff. So I've got... Oh my goodness. I've got a big old raid coming in is what I've got. I've got a nice noodle raid. Is that what's happening? Hey, Amy. How you doing? You got me in the middle of lunch. I Surge Nice Noodle. My goodness. Hi, everybody. My name is Surge. Hang out with Lonely Ready Run. I got to meet Amy. Oh, my goodness. What was it? 10 or 13,000 years ago when we had you as a guest at the PPR? I was just thinking about that. You had a, a magic card cape at the time. It was fantastic. At least a decade ago. I know. So, yeah. Uh, today, we're playing a very cozy game called As Far As The Eye. Which PPR was that? God, I don't even remember. Amy, do you remember? I'm very spoiled in that I've get I've gotten to do like dozens of them now. That was 2018. A uh, random little, actually like, Easter egg in my office. Hold on, zoom out. Or did I enhance? Was that tighter or wider? What have I done? I made it wider. Right here above me, I have sealed product from every single PPR I've ever gotten to be a hand, uh, hand of. These are sealed uh, pre-release kits for all of them, which I think is kind of cool. Enhance? Too, too tight. Too tight. Hold on. Too tight. Good enough. So many PPR kits, right? I don't know. I think that's just kind of like a special little... I don't know. It warms my heart, and it's a cool set decoration. You have a stronger will than I for not opening them? Ah, it's fine. So yeah, we're playing As Far As The Eye after I finish my lunch break, which is like a super cozy, buildy, puzzle, but also roguelike game. So if you like strategy games, if you like resource management games, if you like a chill time of watching people hang out and learn games, then welcome. Take a seat, friends. 
you will have to suffer through me eating for like five minutes, but you know, so it goes. We can chat about things. If you got questions, AMA. That PPR was back in 1988. It sure was. It was a good year. Oh, you should have seen our hair back then. We were so young. Oh, right. When you get raided, you also do the other part of the raid, which is where you shower compliments on the raidee. No, I'm the raidee. They're the raider. So if you don't know, Amy, also known as twitch.tv slash Amazonian, is a fantastic magic creator. My favorite part about her is just how low-key chill she is about everything. So, makes jank decks, loves it, has a great time, doesn't take anything too seriously, still just absolutely slays. Very good time, very positive, very magic, very wow. So yeah, do yourself a favor, go follow Amy's channel. Good luck judging for the Modern Horizons 2 PPR. I'm a little nervous about that one. So when I wrote the judge video for Modern Horizons 1, there were 44 mechanics in that set. And I'm um, a little bit worried about how I'm going to write this one. So luckily I have a, an admin day tomorrow. I got some time scheduled this afternoon to actually like sit down and study and try and figure some stuff out. You're telling your sister about this game? It's not the game you'd like to play yourself, but having a lot of fun watching you play it? Absolutely. The judge videos are the best part. You and Nelson are amazing. Thank you very much. Put a lot of effort into making those as, as accessible and entertaining as possible. It's hard to take something that can be very dry, like magic rulings, and then try and make a video that'll be both informative and not wrong. It has to be correct. Kathleen and I spent a lot of time going back and forth and she's like, can you rewrite this? And I'm like, literally, I cannot. It has to be written this way. So it turns out magic is a very precise game when it comes to language. Yeah. So Kathleen comes in from the angle of like, how can we make this as entertaining as possible? And I always come from it as like, how can I make this as technically correct as possible? And then we find a nice compromise. Sometimes reading the card is tough. Or not enough. There's like other shadowy rules in the background. Technically correct is the best kind of correct? Yeah. Well, you kind of have to. If it's a rules video, it can't be close enough. It's not the close enough video, right? It's not the horseshoe. Welcome to the... Um, you'll get most of the idea of rules video, right? Nuanced but accessible. A heck of a balance to strike. We've had a lot of practice, luckily. So my favorite part was... I don't know how many of you actually watched the first ever pre-pre-release we did. It was back at Moonbase 3, and, oh god, was it Shadows Over Innistrad? It was around that era, right? And we didn't have a rules video for that one, because we had no idea. And the way that I had to explain the rules to everybody is I was sitting on camera live with, uh, I think it was Marshall Sutcliffe did our first ever deck build, our first ever open. So Graham hosted it and welcomed everybody. And then it just cut to, I'm pretty sure it was Marshall and I just sitting there. And the rule was, I was just going to sit there. And anytime a new mechanic showed up, you know, um, Marshall would be like, oh, cool. Here's a card with delirium. How does delirium work, Serge? And I'd have to read it out. But the part that wasn't well thought out is then chat started firing questions at me. So I'm on stream, I'm sitting there supposedly trying to banter with Marshall, and I have my eye on chat. And Paul would be like, oh, okay, sir. Oh yeah, it was definitely one of those Eldrazi sets because Ingest was in it. And Paul was like, 
In a game of Commander, if a card has been put into exile and your opponent goes to ingest it, what happens? And that's when I realized that trying to answer edge case questions live on stream with 5,000 people watching was not great. And thus the judge video was born. I was like, what if I just handled all of the questions in a pre-record rather than sitting there live on camera? Yeah, we didn't have chat judges at that time either. That was also before we had a second judge too. So I watched every on-camera match. I answered every question in chat. And I was just on for like nine hours. It uh, was kind of a mess to start with. It's gotten a lot better since. Yeah, PPRs used to be a pretty long day for the judges. Pretty long day for Surge. Did you know you managed to activate my Google Assistant four times during the stream? Sometimes I look down and my phone is just searching random things and I have no idea how we got there. It's probably because I start a lot of sentences with OK, being very excited. You're really glad we don't thank, any thank everybody individually during large events anymore? We kind of... It's unfortunate we had to grow out of it, but it's also very flattering of a problem to have to solve, right? Who else was on that first PPR? Was that the one where we had... It was Marshall and Jimmy? I think that's when I met both of them. I still have a limited resources shirt that Marshall gave me from that, uh, that recording. Oh, James is on it. Right. James was there the first time. We had uh, Marshall and Jimmy. Who was our third guest on the first ever PPR? There's got to be like a wiki page somewhere. Was Kenji in the first one? I know Jimmy was in a couple of the early ones because in the early days we had a tournament structure and Jimmy got eliminated in the first round both times. And so we, we, we decided to make the Jimmy rule, which it wasn't a tournament anymore, so people wouldn't get knocked out. Set stuff of them. Okay, here we go. 2016. It was Shadows over Innistrad. I was absolutely correct. Uh, it doesn't say who the guests are on the wiki, though. I remembered that much. It's odd that the wiki doesn't state who the guests are. Oh, no, here we go. There's a whole other page. James Turner, Cameron Lauder, Graham Stark, Kathleen Devere. You were right. So it was Marshall... Kenji, Athena, of course, and then Jimmy Wong. All right, where was Amy? Amy said it was probably, there we go. Core 2019. Nox, right. Oh, the Battle Bond one was very fun. God, we got so many wonderful people on this. We've had Marshall a couple times, haven't we? Hmm. Oh, you found the wiki as well? Thank you, Kutsune. Unstable is fun to watch. Unstable was the one I was the most nervous to judge. I have no idea why, but the unset, I was just like, this is awful. It's like, I'm not going to get the joke. I'm going to get the rules wrong and everyone's going to hate me and I'm going to be a phony. I don't know why. The 
The first PPR was in 2016. I told you they've been going on for like 30 or 40 years now. It's unbelievable. To be fair, unsets don't use rules. Yeah, but the problem is they do do rules. And magic people, magic fans are going to insist that there is a correct ruling. Luckily, luckily, the way the rules work for an unset is if there's a correct ruling or there's a fun ruling, you're supposed to go with the fun ruling. So that took a lot of pressure off. But when I had to do a rules video for it, I was just like, oh, God. Are you sure it wasn't because Mark Rosewater was there? We had one... I think it's when we had Aaron Forsyth. Who was like the acting rules manager at the time. I can't remember if it was Aaron Forsyth or if it was uh, Matt Tabak. One of the two. Every time I had to go up to the table and do a judge ruling, I'd be like, this is how it works. And then I'd kind of let, let it trail off. And I'd look down. It was Tabak, right? I'd look down and then Tabak would nod and be like, yes, that's how it works. There was this weird little moment of like unconsciously looking for affirmation every time I made a ruling. It was terrifying. I think for Tayback the same time too, that was still in the era of um, me being the sole judge. I was so hungry. I needed to take a break. I was actually like, Tayback, you're in charge. And I ran out and I grabbed lunch. I just like ran to the parsonage to have a quick coffee. I just needed a break so bad. Oh, right. Moonbase 3 didn't have air conditioning. Was that the one in the middle of the summer too? Yeah, that was in July. Oh, God, it was so hot in that room. You okay with me asking difficult judge questions? Um, yes and no. I don't guarantee to answer it. Or even get it right. So the reality is most judges don't have all the information upstairs in their brain. And like, when I'm... When I'm not doing magic stuff, I'm not going to take the time to look something up. But feel free to ask. All right, we'll put that down. All right. Actually, I'm going to keep uh, the music going. I'm going to wash my hands. And then we're going to play more video games. So I will be right back. All right, I return. I return, and it's time to play some video games. Now, a bunch of you might not know what we're doing today. This is a game called As Far As The Eye. The premise of this game is there is an upcoming disaster company coming. I was a little bit redundant with that. There is a disaster coming, and there is refuge in a place called The Eye. Now, you start with a small village, and what happens is... In every place you stop, called a halt, there's a certain amount of turns until it gets flooded. You have to collect a certain amount of resources to actually make the travel from point A to point B, kind of like FTL. And you can press your luck and stay longer by collecting more resources. However, you can only carry so much with you, and if you over-collect, you actually get punished. So it's a very interesting risk-reward, resource management, balance game. Yeah, and we just finished the campaign slash tutorial, which is pretty cool. So we're going to be checking out the main game now. Oh, cool. So we have the West Tribe, South Tribe, East Tribe. This is actually kind of cool. Originating from the regions in the west of the Eye, guiding one of these tribes is a calm adventure. The Westians, okay, are compassionate, ascetic, and gentle. They bend to the will of the Psy and are happy to adopt all forms, working in all trades. 
The region is diverse and their path to the eye, although strewn with pitfalls, is the most lenient. They start from a large and balanced area, which allows them to stock up on food before continuing their journey. An ancient land of sedentary populations, the west is dotted with extraordinary places to explore, ruins, and sacred sites. Let's play. What happens if you have two copies of Brothers Yamazaki out? Yeah, see, I don't even know what that card does. Gonna go on a limb and say this game is not made in North America. That is what I have been led to believe. Yeah, I don't have an answer for you, Mally. I'm sorry, friend. I don't know if that's supposed to be a test if you're genuinely playing a game of Magic and that came up, but I have no answer for you. So as far as the eye, who made this? Developer. <clears throat> I can't spell that word. Unexpected Studio. Oh, they're French! Here's that French stream you wanted, chat. Wait, that's English. Why did it translate it? So it's called Unexpected Studio. Parfait. <laughs> Alright, well, whatever. So it goes. Alright, so if we go to the Medium Marsh, it's going to cost us Wood and Stone. If we go on the Southern Path, it's also Wood and Stone. This is going to require Herbalist. Okay. Hold on. Welcome to As Far As The Eye. You have activated the basic tutorial. You can deactivate it in the option menu. Uh, let's deactivate that. Game? It says you can deactivate it in the game settings. Where was that? Gameplay. Oh, basic? Disabled. There we go. I like that the options are basic and disabled as opposed to on and off, but that's fine. So the map is significantly larger here. Anyways, let's check this whole thing out. So here's our end destination. We have to make one, two, three, four jumps. Oh, you don't even get to know too far in advance. Oh, that's kind of cool. So if I want to go here, I need a Herbalist level 2. Uh, herbalists come from... I think from collecting spices, which presumably we'd have here. So we have a small rainforest, or we can go to a medium marsh. And then on this tile, we can see that there's farmland and there's lots of marshes, which is kind of spooky. Or here, something kind of cool. Oh, sacred. So I need a druid if I go there. They're the pre-druids. Okay. I think I'm probably going to want to go to the top path. Anyways, so that means I need wood and I need stone. Uh, let's try and get ourselves kind of center mass on this hill here. I have 200 turns. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. <clears throat> we've got farmland, we've got lots of stuff. Covered some remains. Is this going to be good enough? I've got two open tiles next to me. Maybe if I moved up. I've got bird, I've got resources. Let's go ahead and say this will be fine. Wait, open the knowledge tree? Oh, this is new. Your caravan is very flirtatious and attractive. Installing the caravan next to a pack of animals at the start immediately tames it? Oh, that's so cool. So these resources weren't included in the, uh, the tutorial we did. Wow. Okay, so getting these actually makes a ton of sense now. Extra room? Holy moly. Okay. Wow. Backpack. People's make an individual bag, adding four storage places in a 2x2 format. 
cool. Wider. What is the council? Oh, I love this. The traits of a pupil of your choosing are re-rolled and replaced by new traits. Oh, so this is a question I had earlier of, uh, do they have, do they have, um, personalities when you get started? And the answer is yes. All right, let's learn about Nyoke. Do you have a personality? Oh, no, no, they're all, wait, what's this? Has plus one MP. Is aesthetic and consumes less food. Wow. Takes one less turn to harvest. Great. Okay. So let's get you harvesting. I've got kind of a ton of food already. Let's get you harvesting wood right now. Let's get you exploring this. Uh, let's get you to scout a little bit. Wait, what do you mean at least one has nothing to do? Wait, I have four? No. That's odd. I want a Neoke to be... Takes less turns to harvest. Weird. Kuvi barely manages to push open the stone door before a familiar buzzing sound comes to ear. They close the entrance as quickly as possible. They barely manage to stop the termites from escaping. One of your mobile buildings has been destroyed. Ha! Joke's on you. I don't have any. Wow, that'd be devastating if that's how that started off. All right, you're actually going to be better at scouting because you have plus one MP. Uh, so let's get you also chop chopping some trees. No, oh, my termite collection. I know, right? All right, so we've got some very good sheep friends over there. What do you mean nothing to do? Why are you not chopping down trees? I think they're going to be my builder. And I think the first thing we want to do is be collecting some wooden resources here. How much is it to make a lumber camp? I think it's only 40. Correct. All right, so An Anulet is going to be our builder. You're going to be our scout. Maybe even a druid. You're going to be our, our collector. I think I'm fine for food currently. So we need to find stone. Remains discovered. Incredible. Alright, go in there and check them out. And he dropped off resources. Good. Cozy library! What's this? As Kuvi makes their way through the narrow corridor, the air gets cooler, and as they arrive in a cozy chamber, the temperature becomes ideal. A small oil lamp lights the room and reveals a well-stocked library and many comfortable cushions. What a find! Kobe decides to quench their thirst for knowledge in every domain. They have gained a level in every trade which they have experienced progress. Oh no! Uh, well, that sucks, because they had zero experience. I feel like I wasted a tremendously powerful thing right there, which is kind of heartbreaking. But oh well, that's fine. So it goes. Okay, there's stone there. I mean, it's like there's no way to min-max that. It's just kind of unlucky and just kind of feels bad. I managed to dodge both something bad and something good. Ooh, there's aura up here.
Uh, let's go ahead and construct ourselves. Oh, I don't have enough wood for that yet. Can you please drop off one more wood? Perfect. All right, let's get a pasture going now. So what do I need to get mobile things going here? Uh, requires stone and metal. All right, so I know I'm going to need stone, stone, <clears throat> stone. So we want to get a semi-permanent stone quarry going. Probably not on this map. It does take wool, though. So yeah, let's get some wool going. Even though I don't need it specifically for this map, getting some wool started is probably a really good idea. All right, start gathering some food. Just actually, no, I don't even want to gather food yet. Uh, let's get down here, and you're going to shear stuff. And then let's move you down here, because we're going to get stone. And these three people, until we have a little bit less, until we have a little bit less food, these people are going to collect stone and pasture <clears throat> and wood. Can blame the termites for eating my bonus. Yeah, that's fair. All right, we want a quarry. It's going to chop down these trees. Wait, hold on. Can I not put a quarry on top of that? Oh, interesting. Okay. Huh. That is good to know. I guess I could destroy this farmland. How much stone do we have there? 300? That's still plenty. Does the actual adjacency side that it's touching matter? Or is it just aesthetics at that point? Wait, I was collecting berries? Why was I collecting berries? How you doing there? Are you leveling up at all, buddy? You got level one, good. Really like the color palette in this game. It's very pretty. Okay, 170 turns. Wood depleted. That's fine. Veins discovered. What? I'll check that one out yet. So who's my little explorer? Is it you? Are you my little explorer? Yeah. Get on in there. Get on in there. Hopefully it's a good event. Look, this time they have at least two levels. So if we get the library again, it'll be perfect. Path to the next halt no longer need wood? Covey enters what appears to be an old scout camp. The previous occupants is left before your tribe arrived, it seems. They left behind some maps showing that the tribe had already overestimated. That's incredible. It only takes stone now. Holy crap. That's so good for us. Um, okay, so then, let's ask ourselves an important question. What does it take to get our iron mine started? Hey, Adam J. Ford with the 24 months, the diamond bean. I would love it if you could post some hearts in chat to celebrate this tremendous milestone. Thank you so much. Who's my builder? <clears throat> Amalette is my builder. Okay, I need wool. Since I get more wool, it'll be great. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much for two years. I really appreciate that. That certainly is better than expected. Wait, do I not have anybody collecting wool? I don't. That's a problem. So 
So um, we're going to make ourselves a repeatable iron mine. Does that make sense? A movable mine as opposed to a movable quarry. Am I going to need a mine in the future at all? I'm really not. I know I'm going to need a quarry though. So why wouldn't I construct the movable quarry? Oh, because it needs metal. I'm a genius. <clears throat> all right. Make ourselves a mine. Why not? We'll make a mine and a quarry. Those will be our two buildings that we plop down over and over. All right, uh, you're going to work. I'd rather you have stone, though. So let's head there. So we want lots of wool. What are our people leveling up in? Did you level up? Great. I wonder if I should be leveling up a cook right away. So if I leveled this up, we wanted to get this quarry going. Is there another stone source anywhere? There's a stone source here, but it's covered in the soothe, so that's not going to work. Llamas and mountain, 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 no resources. Stone that I can't access. So I'd have to plop it down adjacent to this. So the thing I'm worried about is <clears throat> the longer I stay here, the more my food goes down. And I haven't really been leveling anybody up in forage or cooking. Um, but I also imagine that trying to spend as much time on the first level as possible in order to develop to develop some skills is kind of a big deal. Uh, for example, trying to get my builder as leveled up as possible. Oh, we just depleted the stone there. So, that being the case, what if I... Instead, started getting some points in Druid. No, that's one less to... The person I want to have be a Druid is the one that's faster. I want Kuvi to be a Druid. Do I want a mobile Druid? No, I definitely don't want a mobile dispensary. I wonder if anybody's gaining any knowledge points yet, even passively. Okay, 15 per cycle. So let's check out the skill tree now. Amazing. Okay. Pupils adapt their techniques for installing the caravan. Now be installed and appendices deployed on jungles. Amazing. I wish it showed the total count I have. Oh, I have 600 right there. <clears throat> Incredible. So I probably want to save up for this early. We'll see. Dear Mayor Surge, what time is dinner? We're hungry, says the pupils. Ah, well, look. We'll deal with food in the next halt. You got food at home. All right, let's start getting some points in Druid on you. Because the bonus MP means they can move further. So we want those levels going. You're my builder and my miner, which is very important. So the last thing I want to do, and the reason we're trying to build some mobile things, is so I can dump a lot of those resources, right? And we want to take that with us. So I'm going to throw that a quarry. Oh, I can actually put a quarry here. Who was my person who was good at mining? Was it actually you? It was. Great. So a lot of these resources I actually want to sink into my um, <clears throat> infrastructure. I 
I need wood for that, and I need wool for that. Were you my chop chop? You were my chop chop. Yeah, imagine I'm going to need a druid. So getting up to like here or something seems really important. A friendly caravan has arrived. Hello. All right, you there. Um, you're getting me wood. Which is kind of important. Go say hi. I wonder if there's anything I want to know. Any kind of bonuses I can get for caravans before they show up. Natural connections. People connect their spirits to resources of their choosing so that the resources location is revealed as soon as they... Oh, that's actually kind of amazing as well. Flying beast. The caravan ignores all movement points. That's so cool. I wonder why I can't do this yet. Maybe I can only unlock it once I get to the next map. Maybe that's what the one, two, three means. Hello! The caravan is having shortages. They offer trade. I can give them 175 stone and they'll give me two healing things. Or... Sylv's tribe is struggling to feed everyone. Sylv, a woodcutter, is willing to join if you gift them some food. I wonder if I can get there in time. Come on, get that food in. I want that fourth friend. Got there. Okay, uh, my Zoomy one? What were you doing? You were my Chop Chop? Amazing. Okay, so I have a new woodcutter, right? That's you. Oh, what's this? Cannot work during a ma- Oh no, yellow belly, but also resurrection. Oh wow, that's so funny. When they die, they come back to life. Oh, you're an incredible woodcutter. Yeah, get out. All right, your job now is going to be just to harvest food. Your job is going to be to chop down those trees. I think we're just about done here. What else do I want to do before I get out of here? Uh, maybe I want to finish that first level of... Um... Oh, I need to make a house. Oh, that's so funny. Who's my builder? Wait. Actually, no, no, no. I have a caravan upgrade I could use for this. Costs 800. I do not have a caravan upgrade I can use for this. Costs one of these large animals. There's a pack beast right there. This is probably the wrong person to send on this job. <clears throat> Yeah. 
It's always tough trying to remember who is who. Okay, camp is very important. It's going to be something we can carry along with us now forever. So now we have a slightly different problem, which is we've exhausted our food. And I don't know if I want to head to the next map with this low of food. Stop, Lexi. So what are the pros? The pros are we've got a level one quarry that we can bring with us, <clears throat> which is very, very good. We've got a fourth villager. We're starting to get people leveled up on stuff. I mean, we also have like a hundred cycles to go. Maybe I just actually start looking into, um, maybe I don't rush through this, right? Hey, Mama Tats, thank you very much for gifting a sub to Lexi. Appreciate that. Farm is 70 wood. Wait, what do you mean building building a farm on top of this will remove the farm resources? Oh, it has a mixture of other resources, I see. You're my harvester, right? Maybe you want to be my cook now? Sorry, do I have another person in here? Who are you? Okay, you're going to be my farmer. How much does it cost to make a cookhouse now? Silva is now a woodcutter. So suddenly getting way more wood way faster or... Carry faster and further. That's actually kind of powerful. Maybe, I think maybe I do want one of these extra harvest things. Levels up way faster. Sure. This is more important the earlier you get it, I imagine. Okay, let's get this cookhouse going. Wait, heck, was there a different cookhouse? Cookhouse is going to accompany us, right? Or did I mess that up? I messed that up. Whatever. No, that was a mistake. That was supposed to be uh, a permanent one, too. Oh, well. <clears throat> So who's my cook going to be? Maybe the person who's gathering berries for us. I like that plan. So what do you do? You've been my gatherer. So you can gather and be a cook, or is that in a weird direction? No, I think that's fine. Gather and cook. Grilled fish. Oh, no! <laughs> I made the wrong building again, chat! Oh, my oofa doofa. I wanted a bakery is what I wanted. Crap. Good thing that building doesn't migrate with us, right? Ugh. All right, let's try and making an actual... Okay, so there's no point in harvesting these crops right now because I'm going to starve to death. So what I should do 
is what does a bakery require to take with me? Wool? Do you know anything about wool? You do. Great. They're the same skill. Ha. Huh. All right. It's a good thing this is just the first map. A building loses 80 hit points. Which one? This one. Don't actually think I care that much, because that's not the one that's traveling with us, right? This is the permanent one. The water rising accelerates. There are fewer... Wait, there are 20 fewer turns than expected. Oh, wow. Hill's iron ore has become depleted? That's bad. Okay, well, the vagaries are starting to show up. Maybe it's time that we uh, skedaddle out of here. So I've got 150 food. That's really bad. That's really bad. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Time out. Let's spend a couple of turns just grabbing junk, right? Hey, surf downstage. Thank you so much for that prime in six months. It's good! <laughs> Appreciate the support. I do have a lot of science. Yeah, I'm probably going to invest a lot of it into um, additional storage spaces before we get out of here. It's costing me 19 food per turn. Am I netting food as I do this? Hold on a second. I can make a harvest hut right here. I'll make this a lot faster. Termites? Alright, I think I need to get out of here now. CTS last night was funny. It was a lot. It was a lot. Alright, I think we leave as things are starting to get a little spooky. And I don't want termites... Termites eat buildings, and that's very bad. Okay, uh, let's get on out of here. I think I've made a mess and we might die, but we're learning a ton, right? So first things first, let us invest a little bit here in some additional spaces. Let's get a little bit wider. Actually, this lets us have an additional pupil. Oh, I don't think we need that now. Wait, hold on. How many times can I do that? One of three times. Incredible. Alright, 650 means I can seduce, which is maybe good. And vision also seems really powerful. Alright, let's let's uh, let's try and move and see just how much space we have. I think we have room for everything. Okay. Wait. Oh, crap. Oh, buckets. Uh, hold on. Time out. Time out. I've made a mistake. Shoot.
it's not perfect in terms of like visually, but it all, wait, it doesn't all fit. Ah, uh, hold. There. <laughs> all right, we can take it all with us. Let's give this a try. All right, so we're here now and our options are, we have to make food for both directions. I think I want to go this way. Okay, bunch of wool, bunch of animals. No, there, that's bad, because you can see that I need a, a soother to go that direction. Let's go this way. Um, You know what, actually? Let's give ourselves that plus one vision. That seems very important and good. Yeah, I'm going to want to end up here, aren't I? All right, the second thing I'm going to want is I can get a free thingy if I grab this skill. So if I settle myself on top of this wool, I can build my camp right there, and then it gets a little bit trickier afterwards, but that's fine. Oh, I really need to soothe everything, don't I? Wait, they've invented pills that dogs actually like? That's incredible. Alright, so I got to claim that one right away. My people are all out. Where is my builder? Let's go ahead and unpack this camp. I'm just going to go here. Um, where are my gatherers? Kuvi is my scout. So you start gathering. You start gathering. You start exploring. Wait, why, why did, why did you not build anything? Why, why are you harvesting? I have questions. I have questions that demand to be answered. Nope. What are you? Look at this silly thing. Look at that majestic brown beard thing it's got going on. Love it. All right, so we're there. Uh, we're about to build this. That's good. Wait, three turns. I guess we're not about to build that. I guess there's no ruins to explore on this one, unfortunately. Or I discovered, or I discovered. Roger. Okay, that's been constructed, which means everyone can now work. Let's try and lay down the crystal mine next. We don't actually really need it yet. The quarry is good. I guess I can put the quarry there, or I can get another wood chop chop down. Let's get another wood chop chop down first. Those seem really important. Okay, and nothing good is coming from this. Excellent. Good to know. Uh, let's get you collecting food. All right, Sylv, get to work chopping down trees, which is your favorite thing in the world to do. All right, where is stone? Stone is here. I have stone here, and that is literally it. All right, good. So I'm going to displace these birds, whom I don't care about yet. Wait, no, should I get a farm down first? Because I need to get a cook, I need to get a bakery going pretty fast. I could collect all the whatchamadoodles there. Or I could get stone being collected. Ah, we do need stone. We should get stone going sooner rather than later. Um, sorry, wool friends. I don't need you. I'm a little bit nervous about the aura, so I'm actually getting rid of these uh, collectible friends. 
Is that an alpaca? I don't know. It is whatever it is. It's glorious. A new vagary will happen soon. Spiritual feast. Okay. Ooh, architect level one. That's great news. Let's make, um, I guess, repairing cheaper. Uh, Auras only protect one specific resource each. Oh! So this aura protects cereal. Oh, no kidding! And this aura protects trees. I didn't know that. Okay. So that's only if I want to do plain stuff there. Neat. That is tremendously good to know. Thank you, Yandolf. Sure. Yeah. Wow. I'm so in love, chat. Joe just walked in and she's like, would you like a coffee and a snack? And I'm just like, swoon. You're now a level one engineer as well. Am I the snack? I don't know if that makes me... I don't know if I'm comfortable being called a snack. Coffee and snacks, living the life. Okay. So, first things first, I need a farm. And I'm going to make it here. Hopefully that's not... That's, it's okay. It's just kind of like... It's kind of on the weird part. I'm like, mm, maybe I don't want to be a snack. So yeah, I want to, maybe we make the bakery first. Maybe we make the bakery first. Where does the bakery go? Bakery can go here. Sorry, alpacas. Who did we decide was going to be our cook? Can't remember. We want this person to be our druid. Nicole. Yeah. Alright, so if we start by making some rations. The spirits gather in sacred sites to collect offerings and prayers. The sacred sites of this halt are no longer of any use to pupils. Okay. I think that's okay. So now that that's done, I want to wait a little bit longer. And I want to construct and farm now. Okay, so now I should have a supply network. And let's get you making um, fruit puree right now. So I think I did it. I think I managed to get everything I need to get going. So the only thing I need to do now is get some stone going. And I think going forward, I'm worried we're going to need uh, more druidy stuff. Wait, did I turn my druid into my cook? No, I didn't. Okay, I turned my druid into uh, the person harvesting stuff for me. That's fine. Yeah, there we go. Totally fine to be a cinnamon roll. You must construct additional pylons. Oh, who's this? Hello, are you a friend? Totally a friend. Hi! All right, a caravan of pupils passes through the area. Exchanges with this group are fruitful. We give them stone, they give me healing things. Meh. We can get another friend. Oh my God. You want another friend? Oh, they're a herbalist. That's amazing. That's basically a druid chat. Oh, I love it. Yeah, get in here. Okay, uh, this is good. So for now, your job is going to be just collect peepkins, and you are going to keep collecting stone.
Oh, I can't work because I don't have enough housing. Oh, oh, that's bad. I forgot about housing chat. Level two wood cutter. Uh, let's go ahead and get you more wood per cycle here. Yeah, I, for I totally forgot about more beds. I don't have enough tech research here to make uh, things that cheap. There's a free one I get. I just don't have it yet. All right, are we netting in the right direction for cook stuff? So that camp is done. Great. Okay. Let's get you here. Hey, what's up, MTG Nerd Girl? How you doing, friend? You're having an amazing day. Can I collect berries just here? No, I can't. We require more knowledge, right? We totally do. Um, you know what? You can just chop down trees while we're while we're waiting. That's done, right? Yeah. Uh, let's grab more berries just in case. I just want to make sure I have enough food for everybody. We've got 130 turns. Everything is fine. Is this going up? 90, 60. Malfunction is happening. A little scary. The food is going up. Is it? It's down to 38 now. Oh no, the extra person. That was my worry. It's doing the opposite. Okay, so last thing I need to make now, and I think I might need a mobile one of these. I want a mobile dispensary, which requires metal and it requires wool. Got multiple wool here. Squall in six turns. Winds will wise. All mobile buildings lose 50 hit points. That's unfortunate. All right, what's this? Uh, While it's doing a checkup of the caravan building, a pupil realizes that a building has partially collapsed and is out of order until repaired. Oops. Oh, my planes! All right, let's just get you to repair it if possible. Is that it? Okay, that's fine. All right, so my food is going up now, which is good. Uh, let's just get you to grab this one, please. Engineer level two. I'm going to make a mobile one, so 50% off on that is a good call. All right, I want you to be collecting metal for me now. And how much metal did I need to make a mobile dispensary? Oh, oh, because they're 50% cheaper, I can just build it now. God, I'm so good at this game. No hubris at all. Is there one nearby? There is up here. Great. Friendly caravan has come to a halt. Let's go say hi. Hi! They'll give me 400 knowledge if I give them 50 food. Yeah, I can't afford another person. What's this? As a token of friendship, the caravan just gives you precious knowledge? For free? Uh, I'll buy the 400. Hi, little buddy. Yeah. 
All right, I need to repair stuff. Wait, no, 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 no. You stay there. You waiting on resources. I need wool to make that work. Did I make a camp anywhere? So the last thing I'm missing is I don't actually have a place to collect wool from anywhere, do I? That's unfortunate. Oh, that's really bad. Uh, I'm going to need you to build your own farm yourself next. Oh, no. Oh, I might be dead. Crap. So all of my farms are left in this area because I destroyed the rest of them. So I need you to start collecting berries very, very, very quickly. And then I'm going to need you to change to the fruit puree recipe. Are you more efficient as a cook yet? Like, please? 10% more efficiency. Oh, that's bad. All right, what about the next one? 10% more efficiency. I might be dead. I need this person to level up into a druid. So that I can pacify this area. Hey, how you doing, Logophile? Hope you're having a cozy day. Okay, 380 wood is more wood than I'll ever need. So let's get you to start harvesting berries for everybody before we starve to death. What are you doing? You're waiting to cook because we don't have enough berries. What do you mean this terrain contains no resources? It, it has stone. It literally has stone right here. So when I tell you as a quarry to get me stone, I don't understand what your problem is. So we have 256. I basically need all of it now. The purple stuff over here is aura, and aura is preventing me from farming that one plains. So I can chop all the trees. I can do whatever I want here. The one thing I cannot get, though, is that aura. Or, pardon me, is that farm. So I've switched my bakery over to... Is this is a mobile bakery? No, it's a permanent bakery. I've switched my bakery over so that I'm making berries into rations. But uh, this is a little bit spooky. Have I saw it, tried simply removing the aura? I need a druid, which is why I have somebody collecting blue flowers up top. Oh, permanently soothes aura. Might be kind of cool. It's a shame that it comes at the cost of analyzes remains. Oh! Hmm. Food low. No kidding. Thanks, game. Thanks. A building will lose 80 hit points. Boo! All right, we're starving to death. You know what? Maybe you um, maybe you stop collecting stone and you start collecting more food. So my people stop starving to death. How 
how close are you to leveling up out of curiosity? Not quite. We're dying. We're dying, Squirtle. Which building just collapsed? I don't even know which building collapsed. Hmm. Okay, there we go. We got some food in. Now my cook is going to be able to turn that into a better amount of rations. Water rising soon. I think, I think we might be dead. But we'll fight it out. We'll fight it out. Wow, having five people at this point. So I think we flew too close to the sun. Everything was fine until we got our fifth peep. The fifth peep is going to be the death of us, though. And that's okay. That's how we learn, right? I wonder if I'm supposed to be leveling up a cook, like, ASAP. The reason being just to get more efficiency out of them. Simply learn how to swim, forehead. Why don't they simply transform into a fish if they can transform into everything else? Hmm? How peculiar. I'm very smart. Okay, uh, you're not going to be a druid on this map. That's fine, I guess. What else are you good at? Hey, thank you very much to whomever just made a purchase. I don't know why I said it like that. Purchase using my affiliate code. We don't blame you, fifth peep? No, no, no. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Look, one of them can become an oxalotl. Why can't they all simply learn to swim? Oh, no! The water's rising 20 turns earlier. This is terrible news. Okay, now our food is stabilizing now. Are you my druid? You are my druid. Make me healing potions, actually. Oh, it takes food. That's really bad. That's really funny, actually. Can I construct a... I can construct a pasture. I might be able to get out of here. Seems chill, but you're always walking a fine rope. Yeah. Neat. This is a very neat game. So I'm changing the jobs here. This person who is gathering food is going to gather us wool. We need wool to get some important upgrades to maybe get some efficiency out of stuff. So for example, if I can get the wood consumption down on the bakery. Actually, I don't know if that does anything for me. Most importantly, it's going to let Alouette get back to stone mining. Which is uh, pretty huge, actually. Just being better at gathering those resources. So, is food trending in the correct direction? I think the answer is yes. My love. Thank you for that coffee. Is it? Engineer level 3. 
This pupil carries a mobile building on their back during the journey, saving space in the caravan. Oh, that's really cool. Or minus four turns to deploy a building. So I can either carry one for free or I can set them up faster. I think I want my setup to be faster. Sitting in the dark at your junior high practices the Star Wars theme, waiting for the power to come back on? Oh, no. Oh, no. I like that at least the uh, junior high band is practicing the Star Wars theme. That's kind of great. Uh, these are both really good. It's like, do we want to be... Actually, this is maybe kind of real. Let's, get, let's just have one more mobile building. Yeah, let's just go ahead and take that. I made this mobile, didn't I? Oh, I'm a genius. I did. Great. Collecting resources. Collecting cotton. Collecting resources. Waiting for cooks. How much more berries are on the map? Okay, there's still a ton of berry on the map. Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to take uh, old Alouette here. And I need to create a harvest hut right here. Because that harvest hut's going to make it way easier for me to get um, berries going. So that should make it a lot easier for me to get the rations going by reducing the amount of time it takes one person to get stuff. And actually, if that's the case, hold on, let's get you back up here. Okay, I think I've stabilized, chat. I think I've stabilized. So I have... <clears throat> how many more turns? 38 more turns. Power's back! Well, that was fast. Hooray! All right, so this is now significantly faster. Awesome. This is really, really, really good. So we should have stabilized everywhere. And if that's also the case, that means I should be able to, once we get a little bit head on resources here, I should be able to start making some food. Amnesia! In the morning, as they get up with enthusiasm, to start the day, they realize they no longer remember the ideas they had in the recent week. Tribe knowledge loses 500 points? Why did that happen? Why'd I get that random event? That random event sucks. Hold on, time out. <laughs> this event stinks. Buildings adjacent to lakes will lose 70. Okay, I need to get out of here pretty quick.
I think we're getting close, though. Can I get my... Where are you? Are you my druid? Yeah, let's get Stoli up here. And let's try and get a couple of health files going. You paid for streamer luck? Did you? You might want to check those invoices again. All right, most important person I have is you. Let's go heal you a bit. Okay, I just need stone, and then we're out of here. Forests become jungles! Crossing a bog or jungle makes people unwell. Oh my god. Okay, uh, we're gonna die. This is actually devastating. That is my source of food there. I'm going to die. We had it. We had it. And I think I die now. How long does that last for? Forts or jungles. So I can't get trees. I can't get food. If I go into there to get berries, I die. What do I do? Do I just sit down and wait for death? What jungle did you go into that made you get hurt? What's my epic affiliate link? Same as the channel, Serge Jaeger. Are you dead? How long does that last for? Two of them died. Wait, a new person joined my tribe? Okay. We had a couple deaths. Oh, died from hunger. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Uh, I think that's GG. Oh, I love this game. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's definitely difficult, though. Okay. All right. So we had a death. That's okay. I like this game a lot, chat. I like this game a lot. I like this game a lot, a lot. And one of the things that's very interesting to me is that there are eight scenarios that we could check out if we wanted to. So I think I'm going to call it here for today. But that being said, I do want to come back and try out a couple of these different scenarios. The game was even more difficult when it first came out. This is my first time ever playing it. This is my first time checking it out. And I'm looking forward to learning about this. This feels like a new They Are Billions moment. My brain, my brain is like the wheels in my head are turning right now. And I'm tremendously excited for this. But no, I got to end early. I have, I actually have quite a bit of work I have to do today. I have to write the, I have to start doing research for the, um, the judge script for the, 
anything that's happening. I actually have a podcast record this afternoon. And of course, it's raid night. It's raid night. Can I purchase epic, epic games that are not as far as the eye can see via the link? Yep. So the way that works, Alfred, here, let's hop out of this really quickly. So the way the affiliate codes work for something like Epic is when you go to the end of the checkout, I don't even know if I can bring something up here without going to buy it. There's a little receipt in the bottom right corner. So you click on the thing, you scroll down, it shows you your total here and it's like, oh, is there an affiliate code you'd like to enter? And so you just put it there at the bottom of the checkout. So store, I don't know. Wait, these are all free. These are all free? Oh, they're not free. Whatever. Uh, sure. Let's say I wanted to buy Kingdom Hearts. Right there. That's where you put it in. Uh, Sir Jager's my code. Seabats is Adams. Pretty sure TQ, Kate, a lot of people. I don't think Ben Ben has one, but that's all you got to do is just type it in right there. It doesn't cost you anything, and it goes a long way to supporting your favorite creators. So, yeah. Anyways, this game is incredible. I see myself playing a lot of this game. I hope you enjoyed it. It seems, I don't know, it's like exactly the type of game that I want to play. It's got a lot of depth. A lot of small decisions matter, but it's also chill and very pretty. I mean, which sounds like everything that I love to see in a game, right? Tomorrow, I'm going to take the day off. I'm kind of working out a rotating admin day. And last week it was Friday, and this week it's going to be Friday as well. The reason being, last week being the first time I've ever taken an admin day, I looked backwards. And now this admin day, meaning I basically went through and I like cleaned up a bunch of tech debt and answered a bunch of emails and stuff like that. This week I want to look forward. And that'll help me think about stuff like um, upcoming games to plan. I've actually got a really cool opportunity I'm going to be pursuing. I don't have a great way to describe more about that unfortunately but it's good it's good and we're excited about it so yay and thumbs up <laughs> uh saturday no home stream i'm going to be doing loading ready live over with the wonderful people at loading ready run and then sunday fuji and i are back for more satisfactory so if you want to see more of this game as far as the eye join me at 9 a.m on monday should be a good day Think about the chair review. Exactly, Brooke. I've got a bunch of uh, bunch of stuff to look at. A bunch of stuff to get did. Oh, Joe says, if you're looking for a streamer on Saturday during the day, it's our friend Erica. Um, unpronounceable Cole. Er Sherry Cole or something like that. Sherry Cole. If you know that channel, drop a link in the chat, please. So there's there's your suggestion. If you want to see a chill, uh, a chill streamer to check out on, fr on Saturday. Speaking of loading ready run, let's go raid them. Playing some magic. They're drafting some set. So I don't know. I don't even know what set it is. Oh, STX, Strixhaven. Go send some positivity. Thank you again to Amazonian for that huge raid. Appreciate the heck out of her. Please go follow her channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.